the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk, known as the Stealth Fighter, is an iconic symbol of advanced aviation technology, maintaining its futuristic appeal after 39 years. It flew stealthily through the skies, often avoiding radar detection. When it first appeared in 1983, it revolutionized aviation with its sci-fi-like design, pioneering stealth technology, and setting new standards. Its development was shrouded in secrecy, adding intrigue to its story and captivating aviation enthusiasts worldwide. What technological advancements enabled the F-117 Nighthawk to maintain its stealthy profile for nearly four decades? How did the secrecy surrounding its development contribute to its enduring allure among aviation enthusiasts and the general public? Join us as we explore the legendary Skunk Works F-117 Nighthawk. Undoubtedly, one of the United States' most remarkable aircraft, the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk, has a captivating origin rooted in the groundbreaking work of a Soviet mathematician named Pyotr Ulfimzev. The genesis of this extraordinary aircraft can be traced back to Ulfimzev's groundbreaking paper in 1964 titled Method of Edge Waves in the Physical Theory of Diffraction. Little did he know that his theoretical work would catalyze a revolution in aircraft design. Ulfimzev's paper challenged conventional wisdom by revealing that an aircraft's radar return wasn't solely determined by its size as previously believed. Instead, it was intricately linked to its edge configuration. He demonstrated that even large aircraft could significantly reduce radar visibility by strategically altering their structural design. However, during the 1960s, implementing such changes posed a significant challenge as they could compromise an aircraft's aerodynamic performance. Ulfimzev's pioneering paper was ahead of its time, a visionary glimpse into the future of aviation. In the early 1970s, an analyst at Lockheed, Dennis Overholzer, stumbled upon Ulfimzev's work. By this point, advances in computer technology had reached a level where Ulfimzev's visionary concepts from a decade earlier were suddenly within reach. The convergence of Ulfimzev's theoretical insights and the technological progress of the 1970s set the stage for the development of the F-117 Nighthawk. Lockheed's engineers and designers took Ulfimzev's principles to heart, applying them to create an aircraft that would revolutionize the world of military aviation. The genesis of the Nighthawk dates back to 1975, when development commenced using a model aircraft whimsically named the Hopeless Diamond, a nod to the world's renowned and valuable Hope Diamond. This obscure beginning hinted at the extraordinary journey that lay ahead. In 1976, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency entered into a contract with Lockheed Skunk Works in Burbank, California. Lockheed Skunk Works, officially known as Lockheed Martin's Advanced Development Programs, boasts a storied history of pioneering aircraft. It has birthed a remarkable lineage of aerial marvels, many of which have been featured on megaprojects. These include the U-2 spy plane, the legendary Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird, the formidable Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor, the cutting-edge Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, and, of course, the enigmatic Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk. The codename Have Blue marked the inception of what would ultimately evolve into the F-117 Nighthawk, a groundbreaking leap in aviation technology. By the close of 1977, two experimental aircraft had been successfully built, all while remaining remarkably under budget with a total cost of $35 million, which equates to approximately $149 million today. This fiscal efficiency was a remarkable feat particularly in the context of megaprojects. These early prototypes, known as HB-1001 and HB-1002, were a testament to resourcefulness. They incorporated components from various existing aircraft, such as the jet engines from the Northrop T-38A, the fly-by-wire systems from the F-16, the landing gear from the A-10, and the environmental systems from the C-130. Although these aircraft may have appeared somewhat pieced together, they unequivocally demonstrated the viability of the emerging stealth technology. However, it's worth noting that both HB-1001 and HB-1002 experienced crashes during their development phases. Despite these setbacks, 
The Department of Defense recognized the technology's immense potential before these incidents and decided to expand the program under the cryptic code name Senior Trend, a far cry from the high-tech names often associated with cutting-edge projects. Within Lockheed Skunk Works, the development of the F-117 was guided by a sophisticated computer program known as ECHO. This program was instrumental in designing an aircraft with flat panels called facets. These facets were strategically arranged to scatter over 99% of radar signal energy, an innovation known as painting the aircraft. This groundbreaking approach to stealth technology would redefine the way aircraft are designed. The first recognizable F-117, as we know it today, took to the skies at the infamous Area 51 on June 18th of June 1981. Over the subsequent years, it underwent extensive development and testing. Meanwhile, the media began to buzz with rumors of a mysterious stealth fighter, often inaccurately referred to as the F-19. These speculations led to the creation of entirely incorrect models that were even featured in computer games. The public's curiosity was piqued, but the true nature of what they were witnessing remained shrouded in secrecy. In July 1986, an incident in Sequoia National Park inadvertently shed light on the existence of the secretive F-117 Nighthawk. The crash of an F-117 in the pristine wilderness led to unforeseen consequences, triggering a chain of events that would eventually unveil the covert project to the public. The crash, tragically resulting in the pilot's death and sparking a forest fire, prompted an immediate response from the U.S. government. With remarkable swiftness, the full weight of government power swung into action. A helicopter gunship took to the skies, ominously circling the crash site, while armed guards on the ground formed a formidable perimeter. Even firefighters were denied access to the area, emphasizing the extreme sensitivity of the situation. In an attempt to obscure the true nature of the incident, the wreckage of the F-117 was later replaced with an F-101 Voodoo aircraft, quietly sourced from the secretive Area 51. However, the fact that we are discussing this event today suggests that the government's efforts at concealing the incident were unsuccessful. Official acknowledgement of the F-117's existence came on November 10, 1988, when a single grainy image surfaced. Yet, it was in April 1990 that the Nighthawk emerged from the shadows. Two F-117S arrived at Nellis Air Force Base and were formally presented to a crowd of tens of thousands, marking a historic moment. The ghosts had finally been unveiled. Sixty-four F-117 Nighthawks were built, with five designated full-scale development aircraft bearing the YF-117A designation. The final F-117, number 59, was delivered on July 3, 1990. Their flyaway cost, which denotes the production cost alone, amounted to $42.6 million, equivalent to approximately $91 million in today's currency. The F-117 Nighthawk, often misunderstood by the public, demands clarification regarding its capabilities and limitations. Contrary to popular belief, these stealth fighters are not invisible to radar, a common misconception that needs debunking. While their design significantly reduces the likelihood of radar detection, they are far from truly invisible. It's essential to dispel this myth to appreciate their role and capabilities better. One misconception that has clung to the F-117 is that it is a joy to fly. In reality, they have earned the somewhat colorful nickname, the Wobbling Goblin. Although some pilots argue this label may be a tad unfair, the F-117's flight characteristics are unique and require specialized training and handling. It's not the smooth ride one might expect, but rather a unique flying experience that pilots must adapt to. In terms of armament, the F-117 has its limitations. It can carry only two bombs, making it less formidable in payload than other aircraft. Additionally, its speed falls short compared to some contemporary counterparts, and it's designed for something other than dogfights against top-grade fighter aircraft. The F-117's strengths lie elsewhere, and it's essential to recognize its purpose within the broader military strategy. The F-117 Nighthawk excels in covert operations, particularly at night. 
Its design and technology make it exceptionally adept at penetrating enemy defenses and striking high-value targets in darkness. This stealthy capability, combined with precision-guided munitions, makes it a formidable asset in specialized roles, such as strategic strikes and deep reconnaissance. The F-117 Nighthawk's exceptional stealth capabilities are at the core of its design, enabling it to operate covertly and penetrate hostile environments with unparalleled effectiveness. Its radar cross-section, a measure of its detectability by radar systems, is a mere 0.001 square meters. This minuscule value is achieved through a combination of innovative design features. One of the aircraft's most distinctive attributes is its high sweep angle wings, set at an impressive 50 degrees. This design choice, quite unlike most other aircraft, serves to deflect incoming radar waves to the sides, rather than directly back to the source. It contributes significantly to the F-117 stealth profile by minimizing radar returns and making it exceptionally challenging to detect on enemy radar screens. Furthermore, the F-117's exterior is coated with radar-absorbing iron ball paint, which enhances its radar absorption properties. Additionally, the aircraft is magnetically charged, reducing radar returns and making it even more elusive to detection systems. The exhaust ports on the F-117 are noticeably narrower than those on conventional aircraft. This design modification creates tight slits, effectively reducing the aircraft's infrared signature. Infrared detection systems often rely on identifying the heat generated by engines, but the F-117's design mitigates this vulnerability. Powering the F-117 are two non-afterburning General Electric F-404 turbofan engines, each capable of producing 10,600 pounds of thrust. While this provides a respectable maximum speed of 684 miles per hour, it pales in comparison to the F-22, which succeeded the F-117 in many combat roles. The F-22 boasts a top speed of 1,500 miles per hour, with each of its engines delivering a staggering 26,000 pounds of thrust. This makes the F-22 over twice as fast and far more potent in engine thrust. The F-117 has a length of 25 meters and a wingspan of 13.2 meters, contributing to its unique silhouette. Its operational range extends to 1,720 kilometers, but can be refueled in mid-air, allowing for extended missions and strategic flexibility. One fascinating anecdote about the F-117 Nighthawk underscores its remarkable capabilities. Shortly after the Gulf War, pilots embarked on an extraordinary mission, flying non-stop from Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico to Kuwait, a journey spanning roughly 18.5 hours. This achievement still stands as a record for a single-seat fighter, highlighting the aircraft's endurance and versatility. One of the most intriguing aspects of the F-117 is its high degree of automation. The aircraft has sophisticated navigation and attack systems seamlessly integrated into a state-of-the-art digital avionics suite. Before a mission, crucial data is uploaded into an automated planning system, which can manage virtually every aspect of the flight, including releasing weapons. However, it's worth noting that in practice, pilots tend to disengage this system shortly before an attack, opting to take control of the aircraft themselves. This degree of automation is not merely a convenience, but a necessity. The F-117's unique design, with its high sweep angle wings and unconventional aerodynamics, demands constant and precise flight adjustments to maintain stability and maneuverability. It's often likened to riding a bucking Bronco, an apt analogy that underscores the complexity of piloting this aircraft. Asking a pilot to manually maintain these adjustments over long flights would be arduous, if not impractical. Thus, the automated systems provide a reliable and tireless alternative, ensuring the aircraft's optimal performance. The F-117 Nighthawk, hailed for its groundbreaking stealth technology, made its combat debut in 1989 during Operation Just Cause. This operation, initiated on the 20th of December, saw the United States launch a military intervention in Panama to oust Manuel Noriega, a once cooperative partner with the CIA who had fallen out of favor. During Operation Just Cause, 
the F-117 demonstrated its capability as a precision strike platform. Two F-117As were dispatched to carry out a mission that exemplified the aircraft's unique strengths. These stealth fighters dropped precision-guided munitions on the Rio Hito airfield, achieving their objectives with remarkable accuracy. The successful execution of this mission underscored the F-117's capacity to operate in high-risk environments with minimal risk of detection. Its advanced stealth features and precision-guided munitions allowed it to penetrate enemy defenses and strike strategic targets effectively. In the aftermath of Operation Just Cause, the F-117 earned its place as a critical asset in modern warfare, heralding a new era of stealth technology and precision strikes. In the annals of military history, the evening of January 16, 1991, stands as a pivotal moment marked by the sun's descent over the horizon of Baghdad. The world braced for a massive and difficult undertaking on this fateful night. The relentless build-up to the First Gulf War had been protracted, with tensions escalating daily. A stark injunction issued by the United Nations demanded Iraq's withdrawal of troops from Kuwait, setting the stage for what was to come. As darkness enveloped the region, the stage was set for the first wave of a daring mission. Ten F-117 Nighthawks stood ready on the tarmac, poised for action. This inaugural wave would be the vanguard of a formidable operation that would see 30 aircraft take flight that night. Their mission was to strike at strategic targets, primarily concentrated in and around the heart of Baghdad, the epicenter of the conflict. In anticipation of the impending engagement, military planners had braced themselves for potential combat losses, estimating around 5%. The belief was that not all revolutionary bombers would return from their missions unscathed. It was a sobering prediction that underscored the inherent risks of aerial warfare. However, history would record a remarkable twist of fate. Contrary to expectations, every F-117 Nighthawk returned safely after each mission throughout the grueling 42-day Gulf War. This unprecedented feat attests to the aircraft's extraordinary capabilities and the exceptional skill and determination of the pilots who navigated them through hostile skies. The Gulf War served as a crucible, testing both the F-117 Nighthawk and the resolve of those who commanded it. The aircraft's ability to operate in highly contested airspace and its precision-guided munitions made it an invaluable asset during this campaign. The aircraft's flawless record during this conflict cemented its legacy as a revolutionary force in modern warfare, solidifying its place in the annals of military history. The F-117 Nighthawk, having achieved remarkable success in the Gulf War, embarked on a period of continued service, further solidifying its reputation as an iconic and effective aircraft. During the Gulf War, these stealth fighters completed a staggering 1,300 missions, amassing a total of 6,905 flight hours. Their remarkable contributions extended beyond military prowess. They were even utilized as a potent propaganda tool. The F-117S assumed a dual role, serving as formidable combat assets and as symbols of hope for the oppressed. Coalition forces ingeniously employed them in a psychological warfare campaign, featuring the aircraft on leaflets airdropped over Iraqi territories. These leaflets carried a simple yet powerful message, urging Iraqi citizens to seize the opportunity to escape the conflict's horrors and save themselves. The F-117, with its enigmatic and awe-inspiring presence, became a beacon of salvation amid turmoil. Following the Gulf War, the F-117S experienced a period of relative inactivity, but their respite was short-lived. In 1999, they were summoned again in response to the Kosovo War, which had ignited in February 1998. The roots of this conflict were deeply entwined with Kosovo's sovereign rights and its people's aspirations for self-determination. As the Kosovo War dragged on with no end in sight and escalating violence threatened regional stability, NATO intervened decisively. From the 24th of March to the 10th of June 1999, NATO forces conducted a series of bombing raids across Yugoslavia to curb the escalating crisis and deter further violence. The F-117 Nighthawks, with their unique stealth capabilities and precision-guided munitions, played a critical role in these operations, 
contributing to NATO's efforts to restore peace and stability to the region. The 27th of March marked another significant and sad chapter in the history of the F-117 Nighthawk, as it faced its first and only instance of combat loss during Operation Allied Force. This operation, a NATO-led campaign in response to the Kosovo War, aimed to halt the escalating violence in the region and protect civilian populations. During this operation, one F-117 participating in the mission did not return to base. It had been shot down by the Yugoslavian army, altering the course of the conflict and sparking intrigue surrounding the aircraft's advanced technology. The sequence of events leading to the F-117's downing began when it was detected by enemy radar at a distance of 13 kilometers, while flying at an altitude of 8 kilometers. The Yugoslav anti-aircraft missile system promptly launched a series of SA-3 surface-to-air missiles, akin to the Soviet S-25 Neva system. One of these SA-3 missiles struck the F-117, rendering the aircraft inoperable. Recognizing the dire situation, the pilot ejected to safety, thus preserving his life. However, the fate of the aircraft itself remained shrouded in mystery. Despite the pilot's recovery six hours later, the wreckage of the F-117 was conspicuously absent. This absence ignited speculation and conspiracy theories, with some suggesting that the highly advanced technology aboard the F-117 had been acquired by other nations, potentially the Chinese, the Russians, or even both. In the years following the turn of the millennium, the F-117 Nighthawk continued to serve the United States in pivotal military operations. It played a crucial role in Operation Enduring Freedom in 2001, focusing on Afghanistan, and Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003, directed at Iraq. These campaigns underscored the F-117's adaptability and continued relevance on the modern battlefield. However, the trajectory of the F-117 within the U.S. The Air Force was undergoing a significant shift. The emergence of the formidable F-22 Raptor marked a transformative moment in the landscape of military aviation. The F-22, with its unmatched capabilities and advanced technology, assumed a substantial portion of the responsibilities that had traditionally fallen on the F-117. As a result of these developments, the retirement date for the F-117 fleet was originally slated for 2011. However, strategic considerations and the changing dynamics of air warfare prompted a decision to accelerate the retirement schedule forward to 2008. This deliberate move to phase out the F-117 had multiple implications, not the least of which was the allocation of resources to bolster the inventory of the cutting-edge F-22 Raptor. The decision to retire the F-117 fleet early also had a financial dimension. By freeing up resources through retirement, the U.S. Air Force was able to secure an additional $1.07 billion dollars strategically channeled into acquiring more F-22 Raptors. The F-22's unparalleled capabilities made it a clear choice to expand the U.S. Air Force's capabilities and maintain air superiority in an evolving global landscape. Furthermore, the imminent introduction of the F-35 Lightning further underscored the shift in the role of stealth fighters in combat operations. As the F-35 Lightning joined the ranks of modern fighter aircraft, it contributed to the evolving paradigm of aerial warfare, offering advanced multi-role capabilities that further diminished the traditional role of specialized stealth fighters like the F-117. Between the 13th of March, 2007, and the 22nd of April, 2008, a remarkable chapter in aviation history came to a close as the fleet of F-117 Nighthawks was systematically retired in seven waves, this process was accompanied by a strategic decision to retain four aircraft for test flights, acknowledging the enduring legacy and curiosity surrounding these enigmatic aircraft. The retirement, however, was far from the end of their story. During this transition, some iconic aircraft entered museums, becoming living artifacts and testaments to a bygone era of aviation innovation. The remainder, however, was mothballed, but meticulously maintained and kept in a state of combat readiness a testament to the enduring mystique and historical significance of the F-117.
In 2017, the F-117 Nighthawk faced another phase of its journey as the National Defense Authorization Act outlined a plan for gradually scrapping four F-117s each year. This process, known as demilitarization, symbolized a calculated step towards consigning these remarkable aircraft to history while responsibly managing their technological secrets and capabilities. Yet there is more to the story. The legacy of the F-117 transcends the boundaries of mere military history. Throughout the 1980s, these mysterious ghosts captivated the world's imagination. Their distinctive black paint and jagged, angular appearance created a chilling, almost apocalyptic image, evoking a nightmarish vision that could suddenly appear overhead. The United States Air Force's B-1 Lancer, a long-range strategic bomber, has been a cornerstone of the nation's military might since its introduction in the 1980s. A key element that makes the B-1 Lancer a formidable force is its ability to carry a diverse array of missiles, each designed to serve specific purposes in modern warfare. The B-1 Lancer is equipped to carry various types of missiles, ranging from air to surface to nuclear-capable munitions. One of the standout features is its capability to carry AGM-86 air-launched cruise missiles. The AGM-86, with its extended range and precision guidance systems, allows the B-1 to engage targets from a considerable distance, providing the United States with a robust strategic capability. All versions of the AGM-86 missile utilize a Williams F-107 turbofan jet engine, enabling sustained subsonic speeds. These missiles are deployable from aircraft at various altitudes, with the unfolded wings, tail surfaces, and engine inlet activating post-launch. The AGM-86BCD variants enhance target selection flexibility. The AGM-86B, for instance, can be launched in significant numbers by the bomber force. The missile's compact size and low-altitude flight capability further impede radar detection, adding complexity to the enemy's defensive efforts. In addition to the AGM-86, the B-1 Lancer can carry joint air-to-surface standoff missiles, both the AGM-158A and AGM-158B variants. These long-range, precision-guided missiles enable the bomber to strike heavily defended enemy targets while maintaining a safe standoff distance. The advanced targeting capabilities of these missiles contribute to the B-1's versatility in a wide range of mission scenarios. The AGM-158JSSM is a long-range air-launched cruise missile created by Lockheed Martin for the United States Armed Forces. Featuring a 1,000-pound armor-piercing warhead, the AGM-158 was developed with low detection capabilities. After the AGM-158, the JASM extended range emerged, denoted as AGM-158B, incorporating enhancements such as a more efficient engine and increased fuel volume within the same external dimensions as the JASM. The JASM ER boasts a range exceeding 575 miles compared to the JASM's 230 mile range. This extended range capability allows the B 1 to engage targets deep within adversary territory, expanding the operational envelope of the bomber and enhancing its effectiveness in modern conflicts. The B 1 Lancer can be armed with the long range anti ship missile regarding anti ship capabilities. LRSM is designed to autonomously detect and engage specific targets, making it a potent tool for striking naval assets. The ability to carry anti-ship missiles enhances the B-1's role in maritime and littoral operations, providing the United States with a versatile and flexible strategic platform. For nuclear deterrence, the B-1 Lancer can carry the B-61 and B-83 nuclear bombs. The B-61 is a dual-use, tactical and strategic bomb featuring variable yield, commonly called Diala yield. It is designed for external carriage by high-speed aircraft and is characterized by a streamlined casing capable of withstanding supersonic flight. The original B-61-0 had dimensions of 141.6 inches in length, 13.3 inches in diameter, 
and a basic weight of 715 pounds, with later versions maintaining similar dimensions and weight, except for the Mod 11 variant, which weighs approximately 200 pounds. The B-61 is armed by ground-based personnel for ground operations through an access panel on the bomb's side, revealing nine dials, two sockets, and a T-handle that manually triggers the Command Disable function. An MC-4142 Strike Enable plug and a PAL connector are inserted into the sockets to complete critical circuits. The Command Disable mechanism involves entering a three-digit code, turning a dial to DI, pulling back a T-shaped handle, and lastly, releasing a spring-loaded firing pin. This activity is an MC-4246 A thermal battery, freeing the internal circuitry without causing detonation, rendering the bomb monusable until repaired at Pantex. In terms of fusing and delivery, the B61 can be configured for airburst or groundburst detonation, and it supports freefall, retarded freefall, or laydown delivery using a parachute to slow down the weapon during release. Only Mod 0 to 10 versions are equipped with a parachute retarder, offering the aircraft an escape chance during retarded delivery or allowing the weapon to survive ground impact in laydown delivery. Pilots can select contact preclusion. The bomb can be released at speeds up to Mach 2 and altitudes as low as 50 feet, with a laydown mode detonation occurring 31 seconds after release. While the B-83 measures 12 feet in length and has an 18-inch diameter, the nuclear explosive package occupies approximately 3 to 4 feet in the forward part of the bomb case based on published drawings. Weighing around 2,400 pounds, most of the total mass is in the nuclear explosive. The bomb features a variable yield, adjustable from a low kiloton range to a maximum of 1.2 megatons of TNT. Protected by a Category D permissive action link, the weapon is designed to prevent enabling or detonation without proper authorization. Approximately 650 B-83s were constructed, and the weapon remains in active service as part of the United States' enduring stockpile. This nuclear capability adds a crucial dimension to the B-1's mission profile, allowing it to contribute to the United States nuclear triad alongside intercontinental ballistic missiles and ballistic missile submarines. The B-1's flexibility to carry conventional and nuclear munitions underscores its significance as a strategic asset. In August 2019, the Air Force revealed a modification to the B-1B aircraft, allowing it to increase its internal and external weapon carrying capacity. By expanding the space in the intermediate bay from 180 to 269 inches using a movable forward bulkhead, the internal bay was adapted to accommodate the common strategic rotary launcher. Additionally, six of the eight previously unused external hardpoints were utilized in compliance with the new START treaty. This enhancement significantly boosted the B-1B's weapon load, increasing it from 24 to 40. The modified configuration not only facilitates the carrying of heavier weapons in the 5,000 pounds range, including hypersonic missiles, such as the AGM-183 ARRW, but also paves the way for potential integration of the house potentially bringing the total number of hypersonic weapons to 31 when considering both internal and external carriage. DARPA reported the third successful flight of HAWC on July 18, 2022, where the missile achieved Mach 5 speed at an altitude exceeding 60,000 feet, covering more than 300 nautical miles. The final successful flight test, announced on January 30, 2023, demonstrated improved capabilities. DARPA plans to advance these technological enhancements through the More Opportunities with Hawk program. The B-1 boasts a sophisticated blended wing body configuration, integrating variable sweep wings, four turbofan engines, triangular ride control fins, and a distinctive cruciform tail. The adaptability of its wings allows for a sweep range from 15 degrees to an impressive 67.5 degrees, strategically employed for various flight phases. 
Forward swept wing settings prove beneficial during takeoff, landings, and high altitude economical cruising, while aft swept wing configurations are optimized for high subsonic and supersonic flight. One of the remarkable features enhancing the B-1's operational versatility is its variable sweep wings coupled with an advantageous thrust-to-weight ratio. This combination improves takeoff performance and enables the aircraft to utilize shorter runways compared to its predecessors, showcasing its agility and adaptability. To address aerodynamic challenges associated with the aircraft's length, particularly in the presence of air turbulence at low altitudes, Rockwell ingeniously incorporated small triangular fin control surfaces or vanes near the nose of the B-1. The innovative structural mode control system orchestrates the movement of these vanes and the lower rudder, effectively countering the effects of turbulence and ensuring a smoother flight experience. Despite its prowess, the B-1B has certain speed limitations unable to achieve Mach 2 Plus speeds. A low-level speed complements the maximum speed of Mach 1.25 at altitude increased to Mach 0.92. This deliberate limitation safeguards against potential structural and air intake damage during high-speed operations. The B-1B employs an advanced radar cross-section reduction strategy to enhance its stealth capabilities. Serpentine air intake ducts and fixed intake ramps are integral to this approach, limiting the aircraft's speed compared to its predecessor, the B-1A. Moreover, vanes strategically positioned in the intake ducts play a crucial role in deflecting and shielding radar returns from the highly reflective engine compressor blades. The engine powering the B-1B derived from modifications made to the B-1A's engine resulted in the creation of the GE F101-102. This engine, designed with an emphasis on durability and increased efficiency, has proven to be a versatile core. It has been employed in various other engines, such as the GE F110 for the F14 Tomcat, F15K SG variants, later versions of the F16 Fighting Falcon, and the non-afterburning GE F118 for the B2 Spirit and U2S. The same engine core has also found application in civil aviation as the basis for the CFM56 engine. Furthermore, the nose gear door of the B-1B serves a dual purpose. In addition to its primary role in the landing gear system, it serves as a point of control for ground crews managing the auxiliary power unit. This feature proves invaluable during rapid start scenarios, contributing to the B-1B's readiness and responsiveness during mission-critical situations. At the heart of the B-1's operational prowess is its central processing unit, the IBM AP-101, a computer renowned for its reliability and versatility. This cutting-edge computational technology, previously utilized in the Space Shuttle Orbiter and the B-52 Bomber, operates seamlessly with the jovial programming language, forming the core of the B-1's complex systems. The B-1 Lancer boasts the Westinghouse NAPECO-1164 forward-looking offensive passive electronically scanned array radar for offensive avionics. This sophisticated radar system is equipped with electronic beam steering and a fixed antenna pointed downward to minimize radar observability. The capabilities include synthetic aperture radar, ground-moving target indication, terrain-following radar modes, Doppler navigation, radar altimeter, and an inertial navigation suite, enhancing the aircraft's navigation and target acquisition capabilities. The B-1B Block D upgrade, initiated in 1995, introduced a global positioning system receiver, representing a significant advancement in precision navigation. The B-1 is fortified with the Eaton ANLQ-161A radar warning and defensive jamming equipment. This intricate system features three sets of antennas strategically positioned, one at the front base of each wing and the third rear-facing in the tail radome. The ANLQ-153 missile approach warning system is nestled within the tail radome, a pulse Doppler radar designed to detect and respond to potential threats. 
This defense system is further augmented by eight ANAL-49 flare dispensers on top of the canopy, expertly managed by the ANASQ-184 avionics management system. Each dispenser boasts a substantial capacity of 12 MJU-23AB flares, recognized as one of the world's largest infrared countermeasure flares, weighing over 3.3 pounds. Additionally, the B-1 is equipped to carry the ALE-50 towed decoy system, adding an extra layer of protection against incoming threats. A key element contributing to the B-1 survivability is its notably low radar cross-section. While not officially designated as a stealth aircraft, the B-1's strategic combination of structural design, serpentine intake paths, and the incorporation of radar absorbent material results in an RCS approximately 1 50th that of the similar sized B-52. This figure is roughly 26 feet square, comparable to a small fighter aircraft. This intentional reduction in radar visibility underscores the B-1's adaptability and effectiveness in various operational environments, solidifying its status as a formidable force in modern military aviation. The B-1 has secured 61 FAI world records across various aircraft weight classes, showcasing its exceptional speed, payload capacity, distance, and time-to-climb achievements. In a notable accomplishment in November 1993, three B-1Bs established a long-distance record, highlighting the aircraft's capability to undertake extended missions, reach destinations worldwide, and return to base without needing intermediate stops. The National Aeronautic Association acknowledged the B-1B's remarkable feat, recognizing it as one of the 10 most memorable record flights 1994. The United States Air Force initiated the Comprehensive Integrated Battle Station modification in 2012, marking a significant milestone in enhancing the B-1B bomber's capabilities. This strategic upgrade amalgamated three components, fully integrated data link, vertical situational display unit, and central integrated test system, recognizing the synergistic advantages of implementing them concurrently. FIDL, a pivotal facet of the IBS, revolutionized electronic data sharing by eliminating the need for manual information entry between systems. This streamlined process improved efficiency and contributed to the seamless integration of various operational elements. Simultaneously, the VSDU brought a transformative change by replacing conventional flight instruments with cutting-edge multifunction color displays. These displays enhanced the cockpit's overall situational awareness and served as a backup, aiding in threat evasion and targeting. The CITS, another integral component of the IBS, introduced a sophisticated diagnostic system that empowered the crew to monitor over 9,000 parameters on the aircraft. This diagnostic capability proved invaluable in ensuring the B-1B's optimal performance and operational readiness. Beyond these core upgrades, the IBS initiative encompassed several additional enhancements. Replacing the two spinning mass gyroscopic inertial navigation systems with ring laser gyroscope systems and adding a GPS antenna marked a significant stride in navigation technology. The APQ-164 radar was substantially upgraded, replaced by the scalable Agile Beam Radar, Global Strike Active Electronically Scanned Array. A new attitude indicator further contributed to the B-1B's improved avionics suite. In late 1990, engine fires in two B-1Bs prompted a fleet grounding due to first-stage fan issues. Placed on limited alert, the aircraft was grounded unless a nuclear war occurred. After inspections and repairs, they resumed duty on February 6, 1991. By 1991, the B-1 had a developing conventional capability, with 40 capable of deploying the 500-pound MK-82 General Purpose Bomb, primarily from low altitude. Engine problems, however, prevented their use in Operation Desert Storm during the Gulf War. At that time, B-1s were mainly reserved for strategic nuclear strike missions, serving as an airborne nuclear deterrent against the Soviet Union, while the B-52 was more suitable for conventional warfare, utilized by coalition forces. 
Originally designed for nuclear warfare, the B-1 faced delays in becoming an effective conventional bomber. With the Soviet Union's collapse raising questions about its nuclear role, President George H.W. Bush ordered a $3 billion conventional refit. After the inactivation of SAC and the establishment of the Air Combat Command in 1992, the B-1 gained enhanced conventional weapons capabilities. The U.S. Air Force Weapons School B-1 Division commenced, and by 1994, two additional B-1 bomb wings were established in the Air National Guard. By the mid-1990s, the B-1 could deploy GP weapons and various CBUs, and by the late 1990s, with the Block D upgrade, it featured a comprehensive array of guided and unguided munitions. The B-1 saw its first combat action in support of operations in Iraq during Operation Desert Fox in December 1998, utilizing unguided GP weapons. Subsequently, B-1s were employed in Operation Allied Force and notably played a significant role in Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan and the 2003 invasion of Iraq. During these missions, the B-1 deployed various conventional weapons, with the GBU-31, a 2,000-pound JDM, being particularly notable. Eight B-1s were responsible for nearly 40% of aerial ordnance, including around 3,900 JDMs in the initial six months of Operation Enduring Freedom. The B-1 was crucial during Operation Enduring Freedom, achieving a mission-capable rate of 79%. Out of the 100 B-1Bs manufactured, 93 were still operational in 2000 after factoring in losses from accidents. In June 2001, the Pentagon proposed placing one-third of the fleet into storage, leading to opposition from U.S. Air National Guard officers and members of Congress. This resistance resulted in drafting an amendment to prevent such reductions, with the 2001 proposal aiming to redirect funds for upgrades such as computer modernization to the remaining B-1Bs. By 2003, Accompanied by the removal of B-1Bs from two bomb wings in the Air National Guard, the USAF decided to retire 33 aircraft to focus its budget on maintaining the availability of the remaining B-1Bs. In 2004, a new appropriation bill resulted in some retired aircraft returning to service, with seven mothballed bombers reactivated to increase the fleet to 67 aircraft. As part of Operation Inherent Resolve, the 9th Bomb Squadron was deployed to Qatar in July 2014 with the initial mission of supporting operations in Afghanistan. However, when the air campaign against the Islamic State commenced on August 8, the squadron's B-1 aircraft were redirected to Iraq. Throughout the Battle of Koban in Syria, the squadron's B-1s were instrumental dropping 660 bombs over five months to aid Kurdish forces defending the city. This constituted one-third of all bombs utilized during the OIR period, resulting in the elimination of approximately 1,000 ISIL fighters. The 9th Bomb Squadron's B-1s went Winchester, expending all weapons on board 31 times during their deployment, releasing over 2,000 JDAMs over the six-month rotation. B-1s from the 28th Bomb Wing conducted 490 sorties, delivering 3,800 munitions on 3,700 targets during a six-month deployment. In February 2016, the B-1s were recalled to the U.S. for cockpit upgrades. As the upgraded B-1B Lancer takes center stage with its potent weaponry, it heralds a paradigm shift in aerial warfare, promising strategic dominance. B-21 Raider and B-2 Spirit, showcasing state-of-the-art stealth and strategic advancements, seamlessly complement the B-1B, solidifying the United States bomber arsenal. Together, these next-generation aircraft ensure unparalleled versatility, reinforcing the nation's commitment to innovation and readiness. This dynamic trio stands as a testament to the U.S.'s dedication to maintaining air superiority and projecting power across diverse theaters.
A thermobaric bomb, also known as a fuel air explosive, is a powerful and highly destructive weapon in modern warfare. What sets it apart is its unique ability to use the oxygen present in its surroundings, mainly taken from the air. Unlike traditional explosives that need a specific mix of fuel and oxidizer to ignite, a vacuum bomb uses a small charge to spread explosive material. This material can either ignite on its own or be triggered by a secondary charge. When this finely dispersed explosive substance ignites, it produces extremely high temperatures and releases a devastating pressure wave, which is often the most lethal part of the bomb's impact. Vacuum bombs come in various sizes, from handheld grenades to the massive father-of-all bombs with an explosive power equal to 44 tons of TNT. The historical lineage of thermobaric bombs can be traced back to the First World War, where German efforts led to the creation of incendiary shells known as brand granite in German. These shells utilized a slow yet intensely burning substance, incorporating materials such as tissue infused with tar and gunpowder dust. Upon detonation, these shells burned vigorously for approximately two minutes, dispersing burning components in all directions. The trajectory of thermobaric bomb development continued into World War II, with the German Wehrmacht's pursuit of a vacuum bomb under the guidance of Austrian physicist Mario Zippermeyer. However, a significant breakthrough in creating a functional thermobaric bomb occurred during the Vietnam War. The initial model, the CBU-55, debuted during this conflict, albeit in a testing capacity by the U.S. forces. In 1971, a dedicated team from the Air Force Weapons Center, stationed at Eglin Air Force Base, conducted a pivotal experiment by transporting prototype versions of the CBU-55 to Southeast Asia. The objective was to perform trials on two relatively slower attack aircraft, the A-37 and the A-1. Collaborating with the 604th Special Operations Squadron A-37 pilots at Bien Hoa Air Base in late 1971, the team executed a limited number of combat test missions. The testing efforts extended to Nakhon Phanom Royal Thai Air Base in December of the same year, working with the 1st Special Operations Squadron and employing the A-1 aircraft. Notably, four two-ship A-1 sorties were conducted on November 6th, December 2nd, 5th, and 8th, each carrying four CBU-55 canisters. During these missions, Captain Randy Jane, the NKP test project officer and flight lead, collaborated with the Eglin team to document the test results. Unfortunately, the overall assessment did not present a favorable outlook. Concerns arose due to the unconventional deployment method of the three propane canisters descending under small parachutes vulnerable to substantial wind drift. This raised questions about delivery accuracy and aircraft survivability when released at lower altitudes to mitigate wind drift. Furthermore, the substantial drag characteristics of the CBU-55 canister, with its flatback end, severely limited the A-1's capacity to carry other munitions, rockets, and CBUs, adding another layer of complexity. From February to March 1972, the U.S. Navy Light Attack Squadron 4, stationed at Can Tho, conducted several experimental sorties with the OV-10 Bronco to support joint operations by the U.S. Army and ARVN north of the Mekong River. The mortar used during these missions was deemed experimental, prompting the dispatch of pathology teams to assess the impact on enemy remains at the drop sites. Despite the decision by the Air Force, based on the outcomes of tests at Bien Hoa and NKP, not to deploy the CBU-55 to the combat units in the theater, an inventory of the canisters was maintained. As of April 21, 1975, with South Vietnam largely under the control of the People's Army of Vietnam, the use of the CBU-55 became a strategic consideration. In an unprecedented move, a single CBU-55 was flown to Bien Hoa, and Major General Homer D. Smith, the senior U.S. military officer in Vietnam, approved its use against the PAVN. An RVNAF C-130 transport plane released the bomb at 20,000 feet, resulting in a fiery explosion over a four-acre area. Experts estimated that around 250 soldiers were killed, primarily due to the immediate depletion of oxygen rather than burns. Notably, this marked the sole instance of the CBU-55's deployment in the war, and South Vietnam's government eventually surrendered on April 30th. 
The subsequent generation of the CBU-55, alongside the CBU-72 fuel-air weapons, was integrated into the U.S. military arsenal after the Vietnam War, finding application in Operation Desert Storm in Iraq. This continued evolution underscores the complex history and strategic considerations surrounding thermobaric bomb development and deployment. The genesis of thermobaric weapons finds its roots in the aftermath of the Vietnam War, where the United States pioneered the development of fuel-air explosives. This strategic innovation did not go unnoticed by Soviet Union scientists, who swiftly embarked on their quest to create formidable FAE weapons. The post-Afghanistan conflict era witnessed relentless research and development efforts, culminating in the creation of the third-generation FAE warheads, prominently represented by the advanced RPOA in the Russian arsenal. Significant strides in technology and strategic capabilities have marked the evolution of thermobaric weaponry within the Russian military framework. The TBG-7V thermobaric grenade, for instance, has a substantial lethality radius of 10 meters. This grenade is specifically designed for launch from the renowned RPG-7 rocket-propelled grenade launcher, showcasing the integration of thermobaric capabilities into various weapon systems. In close combat scenarios, the GM-94, a 43mm pump-action grenade launcher, takes center stage as it is engineered to fire thermobaric grenades. Weighing 250 grams and containing 160 grams of explosive material, the GM-94 is meticulously designed with a lethality radius of 3 meters, ensuring its effectiveness in confined spaces. The intentional, fragmentation-free design adds an extra layer of safety by ensuring a safe distance of 4 meters. The infantry portable RPGs, such as the RPOA and its upgraded counterpart, the RPOM, play a pivotal role in launching thermobaric rockets. The RPOM, equipped with a highly potent thermobaric warhead, boasting a TNT equivalence of 5.5 kilograms, demonstrates capabilities rivaling high-explosive fragmentation artillery shells of larger calibers. Variants like the RSHG-1 and RSHG-2, derived from RPG-27 and RPG-26, respectively, further expand the thermobaric arsenal, with the RSHG-1 showcasing a 10-meter lethality radius, equivalent to the effects of 6 kilograms of TNT. Anti-tank missiles have not been exempt from the integration of thermobaric warhead variants. Missiles like the 9M123 Chrysanthema, 9M133 Cornet, and 9K115-2 Metis M have undergone enhancements, with the Cornet EM featuring a thermobaric variant boasting a maximum range of 10 kilometers and a TNT equivalence of 7 kilograms. The 300mm 9M55S thermobaric cluster warhead rocket designed for the BM-30 Smirch Multiple Launch Rocket System, and the purpose-built TOS-1 MLRS, equipped with 24 tubes for firing 220mm thermobaric rockets, further underscore Russia's commitment to advancing thermobaric weaponry on diverse military platforms. With its substantial 700kg thermobaric warhead, the Iskander-M theater ballistic missile exemplifies the depth of Russian innovation in this realm, the spectrum of Russian Air Force munitions reflects the adaptability and effectiveness of thermobaric technology across various platforms. Rockets like the S-8 and S-13, bombs such as the KAB-500 OD and ODAB-500 PM, and guided bombs like the KB-1500S, all featuring thermobaric variants, showcase the versatility of these munitions. In a historic event in September 2007, Russia conducted a test involving the detonation of the largest thermobaric weapon ever created, aptly named the Father of All Bombs. Boasting a yield equivalent to a nuclear weapon, this test served as a direct response to the American-developed Massive Ordnance Air Blast Bomb, previously known as the Mother of All Bombs, solidifying Russia's position in the realm of potent non-nuclear weaponry. The ongoing developments in thermobaric weaponry underscore Russia's continuous commitment to innovation in military technology. The integration of advanced thermobaric capabilities across diverse military platforms showcases the nation's prowess in adapting and expanding its strategic capabilities to maintain a competitive edge in modern warfare.
As Russia continues to invest in the research and development of thermobaric weapons, the global military landscape is witnessing a paradigm shift in the nature and potency of explosive ordnance. 1983 marked the commencement of a groundbreaking collaboration between the Spanish Ministry of Defense, Directorate General of Armament and Material, and Explosivos Alaveses, a subsidiary of Union Explosivos Rio Tinto. This joint initiative aimed to develop a cutting-edge thermobaric bomb known as the Bomba Explosiva de Aire Combustible, or BAC. The program's primary objective was to advance the capabilities of thermobaric weaponry, and to achieve this, a meticulously planned and executed research and development process was set in motion. The successful creation of a prototype marked a significant milestone in the program. The prototype underwent rigorous testing in a foreign location to ensure the utmost safety and confidentiality. This approach was driven by the imperative need to safeguard the technological secrets associated with the BEC, reflecting the sensitivity and strategic significance of the project. Subsequently, the Spanish Air and Space Force became the custodian of the BAC, maintaining an undisclosed quantity of these advanced thermobaric bombs in its inventory. Moving eastward to the People's Republic of China, a pivotal development unfolded in 1996 when the People's Liberation Army initiated the development of the PF-97. This portable thermobaric rocket launcher drew inspiration from the Soviet RPOA Schmel, a predecessor with a formidable legacy. The PF-97, introduced in 2000, was reported to weigh 3.5 kilograms and contained 2.1 kilograms of thermobaric filler. Its enhanced iteration, the PF-97A, debuted in 2008, signifying China's commitment to advancing its thermobaric capabilities. Beyond rocket launchers, China's thermobaric arsenal includes various weapons such as bombs, grenades, and rockets. Ongoing research in the country is focused on pushing the boundaries of thermobaric technology, with aspirations of achieving weapons capable of reaching temperatures as high as 2,500 degrees. In South America, Brazil entered the realm of thermobaric weaponry in 2004. Responding to requests from the military staff of aeronautics and the Board of Aeronautical and Military Equipment, the Institute of Aeronautics and Space embarked on developing a thermobaric project named Trocano. This initiative showcased Brazil's commitment to technological innovation in the military sphere. The Trocano, designed with parallels to the United States' massive ordnance air blast and Russia's father of all bombs, demonstrated its versatility by being pallet-loaded into a C-130 Hercules aircraft, colloquially known as Hercules. Upon deployment, the bomb, equipped with a parachute, followed its trajectory based on aerodynamics, akin to its counterparts from major military powers. Turning our focus to the British Ministry of Defense, 2009 marked a notable acknowledgement. The MOD confirmed the use of AGM-114 Hellfire missiles procured from the United States by Army Air Corps Augusta Westland Apaches in Afghanistan. These missiles, equipped with blast fragmentation warheads, were deployed in 2008 and 2009, totaling 40 in number. The MOD underscored the specific design of these missiles to dismantle structures and neutralize individuals within buildings, addressing the operational gaps against the Taliban. The adherence to strict rules of engagement for British pilots with comprehensive cockpit observations exemplified the precision and accountability in deploying thermobaric capabilities. An inadvertent disclosure in 2018 by the MOD unveiled details regarding General Atomic's MQ-9 Reapers, deployed by the Royal Air Force during the Syrian Civil War. This revelation exposed the armament of AGM-114 Hellfire missiles equipped with thermobaric warheads on RAF attack drones operating in Syria. The disclosure inadvertently highlighted the evolving warfare landscape, with unmanned aerial vehicles equipped with advanced thermobaric capabilities playing a pivotal role in modern conflicts. In the Indian subcontinent, the 2010S witnessed significant strides in thermobaric technology. The Indian Ministry of Defense pioneered by developing a 120mm thermobaric round, drawing inspiration from the high-explosive squash head round. These rounds, designed for the Arjun main battle tank, incorporated thermobaric explosives into tank shells. 
The armament research and development establishment spearheaded the design and development of these rounds, aiming to enhance their effectiveness against a spectrum of targets, including enemy bunkers and light-armored vehicles. The thermobaric rounds developed by ARD employed fuel-rich explosive compositions, creating blast overpressure and heat energy upon impact. This dynamic combination proved highly effective in causing damage to enemy fortified structures, bunkers, buildings, and soft targets like enemy personnel and light armored vehicles. 2011 also witnessed the introduction of the thermobaric hand grenade TG-1 by the Serbian company Balkan Novote. This marked a significant addition to the array of thermobaric weaponry available in the global market. The TG-1, with its advanced thermobaric capabilities, became a notable player in hand grenades, showcasing the continuous evolution of military technology. The exploration of thermobaric weaponry further expanded in 2017 when Ukraine, through the collaborative efforts of Ukroboronprom's Scientific Research Institute for Chemical Products and Artem State Enterprise, also known as Artem Holding Company, unveiled a groundbreaking product the RGT-27S. Weighing approximately 600 grams, these thermobaric grenades represented a leap forward in the field. Upon detonation, they generated a formidable two-second fire cloud with a volumetric reach of not less than 13 meter cube, accompanied by temperatures soaring to 2,500 degrees. This elevated temperature effectively destroyed adversaries and showcased the capability to turn off lightly armored vehicles. The debut of the RGT-27S at the Azerbaijan International Defense Exhibition in 2018 underscored Ukraine's commitment to advancing its technological prowess in thermobaric weaponry. Reflecting on the international stage, the year 1980 witnessed a collaborative effort by Mexico, Switzerland, and Sweden as they jointly presented a motion to the United Nations advocating for the prohibition of thermobaric weapons. However, despite their concerted efforts, the proposal faced resistance, and the motion failed. This highlighted the challenges associated with achieving global consensus on regulating and prohibiting thermobaric weapons. In subsequent years, the United Nations Institute for Disarmament Research recognized the need to categorize these weapons and sought to label them as enhanced blast weapons. Around 2010, there were endeavors to regulate thermobaric weapons, recognizing their potential for enhanced blast effects. However, these efforts encountered obstacles, and the journey toward global regulation remained elusive. The intricate nature of international relations and divergent perspectives on the use of military technology often posed challenges to achieving comprehensive agreements on such matters. As the intensified pursuit of Osama bin Laden unfolded, the United States government found itself in a pressing need to deploy a weapon capable of penetrating the intricate cave systems where the enemy sought refuge. This urgency led to the creation of the Blue 118B thermobaric bomb, born out of necessity and developed under extraordinary circumstances. Upon the completion of the Blue 118B's development and its readiness for deployment, the military and expert communities were struck by the sheer lethality of this weapon. Its immense destructive power prompted ongoing debates among experts, raising questions about the ethical considerations surrounding the creation of such a formidable weapon. Escalating tensions marked the geopolitical landscape of the Middle East at the time, and there was an imperative to neutralize the Al-Qaeda and Taliban forces entrenched within the complex cave networks of Afghanistan. Faced with a precarious national security situation, the United States decided to deploy the thermobaric weapon, hoping it would accomplish the seemingly impossible task of penetrating the depths of the ground to eliminate the cave complex. On March 2, 2002, a covert operation unfolded in an undisclosed location near or around Afghanistan. A pivotal moment occurred when a single F-15E Strike Eagle affiliated with the 335th Fighter Squadron Chiefs from the 4th Fighter Wings, embarked on a mission of unprecedented significance. Suspended ominously from the aircraft's racks was the first operational Blue 118B thermobaric bomb. With the aid of a targeting laser, the F-15E Strike Eagle's computer meticulously calculated the bomb's trajectory, accounting for factors such as height, speed, and range. The weapon was then released, 
hurtling towards the entrance of the tunnel complex strategically positioned near a structure resembling a house. As the bomb descended, its fins and airfoils adeptly adjusted to ensure it stayed on course, guided by the laser beam emanating from the aircraft. The stakes were high, and tension gripped the mission as everyone awaited the outcome, hoping for a successful strike to dismantle the enemy's stronghold. Contrary to expectations, the outcome proved different. The bomb missed its intended target, and while specific details remained classified, the Pentagon revealed that the bomb had detonated prematurely, releasing its devastating energy above the ground. Given the high hopes invested in this groundbreaking weapon, the event marked a moment of profound disappointment. Reports suggest the use of fuel air explosives against China during the 1969 Sino-Soviet border conflict. Additionally, the TOS-1 system, incorporating thermobaric weapons, was test-fired during the Soviet-Afghan War in the late 1980s. Russian military forces reportedly employed ground-delivered thermobaric weapons during the battle for Grozny in the First and Second Chechen Wars. The TOS-1 Heavy MLRS and RPOA Schmel shoulder-fired rocket system with ODAB-500 SP fuel air bombs were used during the Chechen Wars. Handheld thermobaric weapons, including the RPOA, were allegedly used during the Beslan School hostage crisis in 2004. During the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, there were reports of Russian forces deploying thermobaric weapons. In February 2022, Ukraine's ambassador to the United States accused Russia of deploying a thermobaric bomb. British forces, including the Army Air Corps and Royal Air Force, used thermobaric AGM-114N Hellfire missiles in the war in Afghanistan. In the Syrian civil war, British military drones equipped with AGM-114N Hellfire missiles were also deployed. Human Rights Watch and Euromed Human Rights Monitor reported the alleged use of thermobaric weaponry by Israel in past conflicts, including the 2008 to 2009 Gaza conflict and the 2023 Israel-Hamas war. Reports indicate the use of thermobaric bombs and munitions by both the Russian and Syrian governments during the Syrian civil war against insurgents and insurgent-held areas. In March 2023, soldiers from the 59th Motorized Brigade of Ukraine showcased the destruction caused by a thermobaric RGT-27 S2 hand grenade delivered by a Mavic 3 drone to a derelict Russian infantry fighting vehicle. Thermobaric and fuel air explosives have been employed in guerrilla warfare since the 1983 Beirut barracks bombing in Lebanon. Instances include the 1993 World Trade Center bombing and the 2002 Bali bombings by Jamaa Islamiyah bombers. In 2023, there were accusations against Hamas of firing thermobaric rockets into civilian houses during an attack on Israel. International law does not explicitly forbid the utilization of thermobaric munitions, fuel air explosive devices, or vacuum bombs in military operations targeting adversaries. However, the United Nations Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons, particularly the Protocol on Incendiary Weapons, may prohibit their deployment against civilian populations or infrastructure. Despite various attempts, as of November 2022, all efforts to establish regulations or limitations on using thermobaric weapons have failed. The International Red Cross notes that thermobaric weapons by design are not inherently indiscriminate, often incorporating precision targeting capabilities. This precision-oriented characteristic can offer humanitarian benefits by potentially reducing collateral damage and minimizing the number of munitions required to achieve military objectives. The International Red Cross recommends caution in the use of thermobaric weapons in densely populated areas due to their extensive impact and multiple mechanisms of harm. The long rivalry between China and the United States vying for world supremacy is no longer news. While both are influential in their own right, their complex interactions have to a large extent shaped the dynamics of international relations of the 21st century. Since the first hint of the United States strategic bomber, the B-21 Raider, a part of the long-range strike bomber program, army bodies around the world eagerly began a silent yet fierce competition amongst themselves to have the most advanced weaponry, China inclusive. 
China's own invention was first revealed in September 2016 by General Ma Xiaotian of the People's Liberation Army Air Force. He announced during the Air Force's open day that China was developing a new type of long-range bomber. It was radio silence after that until 2018, when a Chinese military spokesperson confirmed that development was underway. The Xi'an H-20 is the first customized strategic bomber developed by China. It is a subsonic stealth bomber design referred to as a strategic project by the People's Liberation Army. This new aircraft threatens the balance of world power because, until now, the United States was the only nation to operate such an expensive strategic stealth bomber fleet, the B-21, until the revealed video showing the H-20 prototype. It is believed to be unstoppable as air defenses, missiles, and even laser guns can't stand against it. This powerful force is speculated to have capabilities that can outperform any enemy, with the potential to flip vehicles over with a simple single shockwave. Its carpet bombing can completely destroy and lay flat an entire city and launch a nuclear strike to just about anywhere in the world. The specifications of this new aircraft have remained a mystery carefully hidden from inquiring eyes. However, through the years, multiple models and computer-generated pictures have surfaced on the internet and some were published by magazines run by China's defense companies. Most recently, insider information has been leaked online. This has given an actual image of what the aircraft looks like. Without the information, an enemy would have had this magnanimous bomber loaded with an advanced nuclear bomb hanging over its head and remained clueless until the damage was done. This new discovery puts a reasonable fear in the hearts of so many, especially enemies on the battlefield. Its bombing potential isn't the only feature that poses a huge threat, though. Even more special is its capability of carpet bombing. Through the use of a set of 12 cluster munitions, this super-powerful weapon can cover an area the size of several football fields with explosives that can achieve terrifying large-scale destruction. This method will not only shake the ground from the impact of the explosion, but invariably leave the enemy's technology in shambles, unable to counterattack. The Chinese went all out on this one as the internal compartments of this aircraft gave it a fair advantage of being able to carry long-range stealth missiles, very similar to the American Jason, as well as other powerful projectiles. As a matter of fact, it has unique anti-radar bombs with the capacity to detect the location of an enemy's radar and fly directly to the target at a supersonic speed, which is even more terrifying. This makes the powerful aircraft nearly impossible to shoot down, allowing it so much more capability. It also has highly developed and sophisticated defense systems that allow the H-20 to easily penetrate weak and rigid enemy air defenses owing in part to its covert shape and ability to fly at 59,000 feet above ground. However, the contributions of its defense system can't be overemphasized. Aside from the H-20 stealth coating, another of its grand features is its unique laser countermeasure system. The developers were probably thinking to themselves about the possibility of making the heat go through the entire plane and somehow they got it right thwarting any hope their enemies had in mind to succeed. They thought about everything, making them many steps ahead. Laser strikes against the H-20 will be of no use as the smart skin layered with an outstanding defense system simply disseminates the hit. Given all of these features, it is safe to question the overall safety of the world by its mere existence. Also, there are some speculations that perhaps it just might be mere fiction. China has not been one to be quiet about its ambitions given its history, so despite news of this new development, there's been no reported attack on the United States to date. This eerie silence raises not just concerns about its meaning, but also casts doubts on the true existence of H-20. In the past, China has been known to copy technology and designs from the United States, such as the F-35 and the B-2. Hence, it comes as no surprise when the revealed features of the supposed H-20 aircraft turn out to be an almost replica of America's B-21 Raider. This reminds us of the 2014 cyber attack by Chinese-backed groups based in Canada, 
resulting in the theft of over 630,000 documents from U.S. companies, Lockheed Martin and Boeing, including digital files of technical specifications, project plans, and potentially sensitive blueprints related to defense and aviation technologies. The B-21 Raider was tested on November 10, 2023, while the Chinese H-20 is still just a prototype, although Chinese state media suggested in July 2022 that the H-20 was close to taking its inaugural flight. As there has been no confirmation from China of these speculations, it seems even more likely that the plane doesn't possess half its acclaimed capabilities. China has long since established an advantageous position for itself as they don't invite foreign experts to assess its developments, so it's hard to tell what is real or not until proven to be true by China itself. Talk about suspense. The silence on their part has created a mystery around the H-20, creating the right atmosphere of fear before its actual reveal or the lack of it. Whatever the case, China is really making a statement with this antics. Despite the veil of secrecy, gaining inside information was easy, or perhaps it was leaked on purpose. However, a closer look at the purported photos of the aircraft shows notable differences. For instance, amongst so many photos that have been distributed online, the two most recent versions of the H-20 from this year aren't the same shape. Several recurring features on these models are noted by defense analysts, including cranked kite wings, foldable twin tail surfaces, and horizontal or V-shaped horizontal tailplanes. With all of these speculations and terrifying specifications for an aircraft yet not seen, it would be careless and completely unwise to debunk all of these and only consider them with a pinch of salt as from past developments and achievements. It's not beyond them to accomplish a feat as the H-20. It would be really foolish to think that the H-20 doesn't exist at all. The recruitment of young soldiers for the aircraft launch by the Chinese military is even more incredible. Does this new recruit class have what it takes to take the copycat risk? China has a long history of making military aircraft, and its reputation in this area hasn't come out of nowhere. In the 1950s, they made the J-5, a fighter plane similar to the MiG-17. Over time, China continued to enhance its aviation capabilities, developing planes like the J-10 and J-20 fighters. In addition to strengthening and modernizing its military forces, China aims to establish an impregnable defense shield to safeguard its territory and effectively influence surrounding areas and the world at large. The making of long-range bombers fits with China's goals of being the world's leader. They have placed close attention on stealth technology, spending a lot to make planes like the Chengdu J-20, a super-secret fighter that's hard to see. This skill with stealth might just have hinted at future plans of making a stealth bomber. The Xi'an Aircraft Industrial Corporation and the 603 Aircraft Design Institute are big parts of China's aircraft building. They've helped make lots of military planes amidst roaming rumors of building a bomber someday since the 2000s and China's silence has kept things a bit mysterious. If there is indeed a stealth bomber, as the people talk about, it would give China a big advantage. It would let them show power from afar and maybe get past really good defense systems. The H-20 stealth bomber is expected to use cruise missiles systematically, allowing it to go even farther during its missions. Unlike usual bombing trips that need to go back to base, cruise missiles can go on their own, so the bomber doesn't have to return the same way it came. This special ability makes the H-20 more flexible and lets it cover a larger area, following the successful strategy used by the American B-21 stealth bomber, which focuses on planning well and using cruise missiles wisely. If the H-20 uses cruise missiles as predicted, it could have a big impact, especially if there's talk of invading Taiwan. It could hit targets in Europe, Japan, Korea, the Philippines, Guam, and even the United States' west coast, depending on how far these cruise missiles can go. Mixing stealth and cruise missile technology, along with satellite guidance systems, makes the bomber very precise and effective. Also, this way of using cruise missiles supports China's goal of having a nuclear triad, which means they can launch nuclear weapons from land, 
sea, and air. Thinking about places called forward operating locations is crucial too, as they help the bomber be more flexible and strategic. Worthy of note is the nuclear triad of the H-20 stealth bomber, China, which used to be more focused on having a smaller number of nuclear weapons, especially those on land, has now created the H-20. This bomber is special because of its ability to carry and drop nuclear bombs at decisive choice locations, adding a fresh part to China's nuclear plan. The H-20 can effectively team up with land-based missiles, making the strategy more flexible. It can also join forces with submarines carrying missiles in the ocean, giving China more smart ways to use nuclear weapons. Certainly, the H-20 plays a crucial role in China's strategy to enhance its strength with nuclear weapons. It can operate independently or work together with missiles on land or at sea. This adds to China's safety and power, especially during security challenges. Think of it like having a strong and versatile team to protect the country. Placing the Xi'an H-20 side to side with the B-21 Raider, it still comparatively lags, beginning with the cost of developing the B-21 Raider, which can be measured in more than just millions of dollars, but also in the lives of engineers who have spent more than 30 years creating this modern-day wonder. Those who kick-started their careers with the B-21 Raider project at the age of 20 will have turned 50 by now, and during this time, have managed to create not just a bomber, but a truly fantastic flying machine whose incredible power is obvious at first glance, such as the world has never seen. The B-21 Raider, which is a remarkable improvement from its predecessors, the B-1 Lancer and B-2 Spirit Bombers, already has functioning secret bases. Created with the intent of destroying potential enemies of the United States and topping the list, is Russia and China. The crucial role of mission planning for stealth aircraft is particularly highlighted in the successful creation of the B-21 stealth bomber. Lieutenant Colonel Christopher Conant, the commander in charge of B-21, emphasizes that mission planning is considered the primary tactic that sets the B-21 apart from every other aircraft. This underlines the significance of how these advanced aircraft are employed, suggesting that effective planning plays a pivotal role in maximizing their capabilities and ensuring successful operations. As China is no simple adversary, tremendous effort was put into the creation of the B-21. So what we have now is accumulated years of diligent service and experiences along the way. Recognized as the first strategic bomber in over 30 years, a testament to America's enduring advantages in innovativeness and invention. Due to national security concerns, the specifications and capabilities of the B-21 Raider have been held close to heart. But what is known for a fact is that the jet is a strategic driving force that boasts sixth-generation technology and operation. With an advanced stealth feature, its radar profile is greatly minimized enabling it to penetrate any airspace undetected, with long-range strike capabilities that allow precise target hits. Its payload includes several precision-guided ammunitions. The B-21 Raider is completely unmanned, and its modular design allows it the capacity to evolve to further future upgrading. This combination of stealth, range, sophisticated weapons and systems, and flexibility in an aircraft makes it a formidable force of technological dominance and operational superiority. All of this innovation raises an unsettling question. Is there a moral compass that guides technological advancements? Where do ethics stand in the creation of machines endowed with the capability to independently target and kill? The B-21 will become an integral part of a complex information system that possesses the capacity to skillfully collect and disseminate crucial data to friendly planes, satellites, radar installations, and even drones. Beyond its role as an offensive weapon with the capacity to neutralize targets within its operational range, the Raider's existence has been lent credibility by numerous test videos and eyewitness accounts affirming its tangible presence. China's announcement of the creation of a space laser was reported to be capable of delivering a devastating hit to any enemy defense by taking out approaching anti-missile systems before an imminent nuclear strike. 
This covert aircraft is a very powerful space laser that has the capacity to reach any point in the world. Its chaining system can efficiently overload missile defense systems with decoy signals generated by a concentrated plasma beam 75 times more powerful than the sun. The Chinese did a never-before-seen performance by testing their anti-satellite weapon against their own satellite. It was a clear demonstration of its power, and it brought into cognizance the fact that technological advancements were in the hands of the Chinese. As this was no small feat, it necessitated a secret meeting with the United States Secretary of Defense held at the Pentagon regarding China's latest space weaponry, particularly China's testing of its fractional orbital bombardment system known as FOBS. FOBS is a system designed to destroy potential strategic targets on the surface of the Earth, and these are no ordinary missiles, although they may look like them at first glance. It involved the launch of a nuclear warhead into a low Earth orbit, specifically the one for which this space laser was designed. The new system makes it impossible for us to determine the target's location because it's completely out of reach. There are deadly nuclear weapons that are impossible to detect hovering above us. One major drawback, however, is that it is not free of flaws. Experts, while observing the testing, noted that the warhead missed its unknown location by several dozen miles. This is no small error, and it spells looming disaster as an increased possibility of nuclear weapons being used, or any sudden change in their deployment may very well be viewed as a definite threat to peace, since nuclear weapons are destructive and ballistic missiles are swift. But all these claims seem a bit far-fetched, too good or fictitious to be true. After all, no one has actually claimed to have seen any evidence of such weapons, and in the same way that everything else China does sounds fake, so does its nuclear testing. Undoubtedly, a nuclear explosion wouldn't have gone unnoticed. Certainly, there would have been at least an eyewitness account. Perhaps the neighboring country's surveillance system developed a fault right about that time. Advanced spy drones, notwithstanding which are a thing now, have had the ability to detect anything, anywhere. These powerful drones are everywhere except for China, which apparently swears by air balloons as seen in the recent incident in Canada, where the military noticed and quickly shot down an unidentified flying object that was circling around Lake Huron. Not too long after the Canada incident, another strange spherical object was sighted in the sky over Alaska, hovering four miles from the town of Ambler, most likely headed from the coast straight through the Kobuk Valley National Park. It is believed that there's a secret United States military base somewhere in the mountainous area nearby. In response, the Pentagon immediately sent out a fighter jet to intercept the object and with one precise strike, successfully destroyed it. The United States government right away suspected and laid accusations against China of espionage. Even though China resolutely refuted every claim and explained that the downed balloon was just a meteorological probe, and that may be true, as the object really does look like a probe, but a reconnaissance drone could certainly be disguised as such, especially since China has been caught spying on the United States multiple times in order to copy another Pentagon development. As appearances can be deceiving, China's ability to mimic, make bold statements, and intimidate with fighter jets raises questions about its true capabilities. The world watches with bated breath as we unravel the intricacies of global power dynamics, the interplay of technology, and the threat of military might. Yes, the deadliest bomb has been developed and it is none other than the Rapid Dragon bomb that is being tested. The Rapid Dragon is a palletized and disposable weapons module which is airdropped to deploy flying munitions, typically cruise missiles, from unmodified cargo planes. Developed between 2020 and 2021 by a team of US Air Force and industry expert, Lockheed Martin Rapid Dragon is a system that has all its abilities packed into a disposable pallet. This means a regular military cargo plane can turn into a standoff strategic bomber whenever needed, and then go back to its usual transport tasks. The airdrop rigged pallets, which is also referred to as deployment boxes, provides a low-cost method that allows unmodified cargo aircrafts, 
such as C-130 or C-17 aircraft, to be temporarily repurposed as standoff bombers that is capable of mass launching any variant of long or short range AGM-158 JSM cruise missiles against land or naval targets. These deployment boxes can be in different sizes, holding from 4 to 45 AGM-158B JASM-ER cruise missiles. These missiles can hit targets from 570 to 1,200 miles away with precision. In 2024, there will be even more JASM-ER missiles with an even longer range. The Dragon Bomb project was named after an ancient Chinese weapon called Ji Long Che. This weapon has the ability to shoot many long-range crossbow missiles at once from a safe distance. Similarly, the present Rapid Dragon system aims to overwhelm a target's defenses from a safe distance, where the launching aircraft is not in danger. It can be quickly used, using existing fleets of transport planes, allowing for significant increases in mass attack missions at low cost and training. This bomb would allow the United States to quickly provide a strategic strike capability to its foreign military partners that already have the ability to airdrop supplies from cargo planes. It also expands the places where aircraft carrying cruise missiles can operate from, making it harder for an enemy to cripple the operator's strike aircraft fleet by destroying their established air bases. While a B-52 Stratofortress needs a 10,000 feet concrete runway, a C-130 can operate from 3,000 feet stretches of less developed surfaces. In addition to improving United States Air Force capabilities when targeting an opponent, the Rapid Dragon idea will allow other air forces that are without strategic bombers, but with transport aircraft, to launch a large number of JASMs simultaneously. For instance, a C-130 aircraft can use the Rapid Dragon to launch about 12 JASM cruise missiles from a safe distance of 620 to 1,180 miles away from the target. This is possible with the help of two Rapid Dragon pallets. The larger C-17 is large enough to carry five Rapid Dragon pallets, each holding nine missiles for a mission with a total payload of 45 missiles having 1,100 warheads. In a test over the Gulf of Mexico on December 16, 2021, an armed Rapid Dragon received target data while in flight from a distant control center. It used the data it got to target its armed Jao SM, got it airdropped from the aircraft, and successfully released its payloads with the live missile hitting its naval target. The other three bays of the four-pack pallet carried ballast rounds of the same shape and weight to check how the system prevents missile releases from conflicting. These non-munition ballast rounds will continue to be used for missions needing fewer missiles than the module's full capacity, ensuring stable drops. During the test, the cargo fighter jet, AMC-130J, was piloted by an Air Force Special Operations Command operational flight crew and the aircraft carried over four-pack version of the Rapid Dragon missile module. The airdrop crew handled the load like a standard supply drop, with the Rapid Dragon's control unit autonomously receiving command and control data for programming the JASM's targeting data. From past experiences, we know that even the latest air defense systems struggle to defend against lots of cruise missiles coming all at once. This happened in the 2018 Riyadh missile strikes in Yemen and the 2018 missile strikes in Syria. Because high-tech air defense systems like S-300 and S-400 are not very good at stopping many low-flying cruise missiles, Rapid Dragon seems like a good choice for missions where lots of JASM ER missiles are used. It can work together with a bunch of small fake drones, released from another module, to confuse and overpower the enemy's air defenses. The U.S. Air Force plans to keep testing Rapid Dragon with C-17s, AGM-158C LRSM, and the AGM-158D JSM XR, which has a range of 1,200 miles and became available in small numbers in 2021. The Air Force's Strategic Development Planning and Experimentation Group is also looking into using Boeing's less expensive but shorter-range JDAM-ER bombs with a range of 50 miles and is collaborating with Raytheon to help Rapid Dragon launch ADM-160 mailed decoys. In November 2022, 
the first live demonstration of a joint air-to-surface standoff missile in Europe took place with an MC-130J at Andoya Space Test Range in Norway, supported by military partners from Poland, Norway, Romania and Britain during the Atreus 2022 military exercise. The system has worked well on C-130 and C-17 cargo planes, hitting both land and sea targets using armed and test versions of JASM EARS. In the future, they plan to expand the system to include more than just AGM-158 missiles. They want to use JDAM bombs, sea mines, drones and other missile systems. They also aim to make the launch system work on different types of supporting aircraft, not just cargo planes. The current version uses unmodified cargo aircraft, while missile deployment requires no additional crew skills beyond those for airdrops of supplies or vehicles. The system can be thought of as a smart and disposable bomb bay, in a box that includes an interface allowing targeting information that is gathered from allied units in the target area to the munitions from a distant fire control center. In November 2022, during the yearly NATO air-sea exercise Atreus 22-4 near Norway, the new Rapid Dragon missile system made by the famous American company Lockheed Martin was introduced. The pallet was loaded into a conventional MC-130J Hercules military transport aircraft for the exercise. With the help of roller guides, the pallet Rapid Dragon was pushed to the opened in-flight cargo hatch of the plane, and then the parachute of the pallet pulled it overboard. The main parachute opened, and the pallet hung from the sling so that the missiles were in an upright position. Then, they fell out of their cells one by one under the action of gravity. Then they unfolded their wings, started their engines, and rushed to their program targets at 575 miles an hour. The idea of launching cruise missiles from transport or even passenger planes is not new. In the 1970s, the U.S. Air Force was seriously considering the idea of a missile-carrying aircraft based on the Boeing 747-200. Cruise Missile Carrier Aircraft, abbreviated CMCA, was to carry 50 to 100 AGM-86 ALCM air-launched cruise missiles on drum-mounted launchers inside the fuselage. Squadrons of such missile carriers were to continually patrol the air borders of the Soviet Union in readiness for a massive strike. The main argument in favor of the CMCA project was its price. A missile carrier based on the world's most famous airliner would have cost mere pennies to build and operate. The CMCA project was not implemented because Pentagon generals, who received good encouragement from the military-industrial complex, feared that if it succeeded, Congress would slaughter funding for the promising B-1B supersonic bomber. But the idea remained popular. In Iraq in 1991, the Americans used military transport planes as improvised bombers, dropping pallets of bombs. In Afghanistan, Military transports were used to drop super-heavy GBU 43B Moab anti-bunker bombs. And finally, the Rapid Dragon. By the way, the project owes its name to a Chinese weapon thousands of years ago, a design that allowed you to shoot several crossbow bolts simultaneously. The design of the Rapid Dragon is literally ridiculously simple. It's a perfectly ordinary transport pallet for a forklift. It can even be made of wood. Rack and pinion rocket rails are mounted on it. Depending on the requirement, one pallet can hold from six or up to nine weapons. If less is dropped, ballast is placed in the empty cells. Up to two six-round pallets can be loaded into the hold of the C-130 Hercules, and the larger C-17 Globemaster can carry up to five nine-round pallets, which is 45 rocks. The pallets are loaded into the hold of the military transport aircraft as a normal load and flight. They're discharged through an open tail hatch with a small extraction parachute. The extraction parachute pulls the pallet overboard along roller guides, after which the main parachute opens, the pallet stabilizes, hangs on the slings, and then begins to drop missiles one by one. The Rapid Dragon currently operates with the AGM-85 JAS MER cruise missiles. This subsonic stealth cruise missile was designed to give tactical aircraft, fighter bombers, and attack aircraft the ability to hit protected targets from a safe distance. 
The original version was equipped with 1,000 pounds highly explosive and penetrative warheads. It flew 230 miles. The ER version has a larger fuel tank, and this feature automatically increases the flight range from 230 miles to 575 miles. The missile is guided by an inertial guidance system and GPS guidance. It is also guided with an infrared target identification system. During the exercise that was conducted in Norway, missile targeting was done from EI ground outside the aircraft's line of sight, making use of a satellite link. This performance demonstrated the ability to target and redirect the missile even when the fighter jet is in motion. After careful consideration, the United States has decided to make use of a long-range, short-range AGM-158D JASM ER cruise missile. The missile is an upgraded version of the JASM ER. It features a new wing design, and its range will be about 1,200 miles. The small-scale production of this missile started in late 2021, and full-scale production at a rate of five missiles per month is expected by the end of 2024. The second variant, the AMG-158, is an anti-ship short-range cruise missile. It is a second variant of the JSM family that is specifically designed to find and engage ships in the open sea. A long-range anti-ship missile has a range of up to 350 miles. It uses only passive sensors, infrared matrix camera, and radar detector to find the target and can coordinate with other missiles in a salvo. The third option the United States Air Force is considering is the JDAM-ER guided gliding air bombs, representing a hinge set of folding wings, rudder planes, and autopilot with GPS. JDAM-ER kits are put on conventional unguided aerial bombs, giving the ability to accurately engage targets up to 80 kilometers, depending on the drop altitude. The integration of JDAM airs on the Rapid Dragon is of particular interest because such munitions are extremely cheap and provide the ability to precision carpet bomb dispersed targets, such as concentrations of troops, from a safe distance. That is what the Russians are doing now, but they only use one bomb at a time, and in the case of the Rapid Dragon, a whole swarm of bombs would fall on the enemy. The fourth option is to make use of the Quick Strike ER guided mine planes. These mines are JDAM ER type bombs. They are conventional high explosive bombs equipped with planning and guidance kits and additionally equipped with a Quick Strike digital non contact detonator that allows them to be used as sea bottom mines launched from an aircraft. These gliding mines can reach the minefield deployment area by themselves and land in designated positions. This allows them to mine enemy waters from beyond the range of air defense. Finally, a fifth option is the ADM-160 mailed autonomous decoys. These small-sized imitation drones are designed to mislead enemy air defenses and are capable of accurately reproducing the radar signatures of various aircraft from the F-35 stealth fighter to the B-52 strategic bomber. The latest models, the MAL-J, also have electronic jamming systems that can be used to jam radar from a safe distance. With the help of this rapid Dragon Bomb, every heavy military transport aircraft can be regarded as a strategic rocket bomber. The simplest implication is that the U.S. has just increased its fleet of bombers, missile carriers, from 116 units. This is the 58B-52H and 58B-1B to 786 units, including C-17 and C-130. It would cost well maybe a couple of million dollars rather than tens of billions. And that's not all. To use the B-52 bomber requires a concrete runway length of at least 3,000 meters. The C-130 heavy transport aircraft can take off from a 910 meter dirt track. Controlling exactly where and what forces the U.S. Air Force has deployed becomes virtually impossible. This system represents an opportunity for NATO or simply friendly countries that do not have their strategic aviation to acquire one. For example, JASM and JASM ER missiles are now in service in Australia, Poland and Finland. Australia has 30 C-17, C-27 and C-130 heavy transport aircraft capable of carrying the Rapid Dragon. Poland has five Hercules. 
By outfitting their Hercules with rapid dragon trays, these countries gained the ability to launch massive strikes with low-visibility cruise missiles over 2,500 miles away. This radically strengthens their capabilities, changing the regional balance of power. Another bomb that is referred to as the deadliest aside from the Rapid Dragon is the Tsar Bomba, also known as the King of Bombs. It was a huge Soviet nuclear bomb that was tested over Novaya Zemlya Island in the Arctic Ocean on October 30, 1961. It holds the record for being the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated, creating the most powerful human-made explosion ever recorded. During the tense Cold War between the Soviet Union and the United States, a group of Soviet physicists, including Andrei Sakharov, built this three-stage bomb to demonstrate Soviet strength. Originally designed to have a hundred megaton capacity, it was considered too risky to test due to the dangerous fallout. Therefore, it was adjusted to have a 50 megaton yield, which was still estimated to be about 3,800 times stronger than the U.S. bomb dropped on Hiroshima during World War II. The Soviet scientists also modified the fusion process to reduce the fallout significantly. The resulting Tsar Bomba weighed 27 tons, with a length of around 26 feet and a diameter of about 7 feet. Although officially named RDS-220, it gained various nicknames, with Tsar Bomba being the most famous in the West. A 295V bomber was changed to carry Tsar Bomba. The bomb had a special parachute to slow it down so the plane could fly away from the explosion safely. Andrei Durnovsev piloted the plane, taking off from Kola Peninsula on October 30, 1961. Another plane joined as an observer. The Tsar Bomba was dropped over the Mityushika Bay test site on the empty island of Novaya Zemlya around 11 a.m. Moscow time. It exploded about 2.5 miles above the ground, creating a mushroom cloud more than 37 miles high. The flash of the explosion was seen about 620 miles away. The damage caused was massive. The village of Severny, 34 miles from the explosion, was flattened, and buildings more than 100 miles away were said to be damaged. Another bomb which fits perfectly into this class is the B-61 nuclear bomb. It is the main thermonuclear gravity bomb in the U.S. enduring stockpile since the Cold War's end. It's a strategic and tactical nuclear weapon with a two-stage radiation implosion design. The bomb has a variable yield, meaning it can be adjusted from 0.3 to 300 and 40 kilotons in different versions. It is designed with various fusing and delivery options suitable for air and ground bursts, free fall, retarded free fall, and laydown delivery. Weighing around 700 pounds, it's 11 feet 8 inches long with a streamlined casing for supersonic flight. The bomb is currently undergoing its 12th modification, and as of 2020, each B-61 cost $28 million. The bomb is flexible and can be adjusted for different power levels, known informally as dial a yield. It serves both tactical and strategic purposes and is designed to be carried by fast aircraft. With a sleek design for supersonic flight, the original B-610 was 141.6 inches long and weighed 715 pounds, with later versions staying similar in size and weight, except for the Mod 11, which is about 1,200 pounds. To arm the bomb on the ground, personnel use an access panel with dials, sockets, and a T-handle for the Command Disable function. This mechanism involves entering a numeric code turning a dial and pulling a T-shaped handle to disable the bomb, making it inoperable. The B-61 can be set for air or ground detonation, and it can be dropped with or without a parachute for various delivery modes. It can be released at high speeds and low altitudes. The Mod 11 is a specialized version designed for penetrating the ground before detonating, particularly effective against fortified structures. About 50 Mod 11 bombs have been produced, starting service in 1997, primarily used by the B-2 Spirit aircraft. The relentless competition between China and the U.S. for world power is no longer a secret, and China is making little to no effort to keep its ambition a secret. 
To achieve this, the country has been investing heavily in the development of advanced weapon systems, such as hypersonic missiles, stealth fighters, and cyber warfare. But its latest development has taken the competition to a whole new level. It is a known fact that the United States has the largest military budget in the world, and it spends more than any other country on its armed forces and the development of new weapons. According to a report by the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, the U.S. spent roughly $778 billion on its military in just 2020. This amount holds 39% of the total global military expenditure. This amount is more than three times higher than China's budget, which is the second runner-up in investing in weapons. It has spent over $252 billion on the development of weapons and upgrading its defense system. But over the years, the amount that China's military has spent on weaponry has grown steadily over two decades. Recently, the country announced a 6.8% increase in its defense budget. This has raised concerns among U.S. analysts who have warned that Washington must keep its pace with Beijing's military modernization and expansion. But from the look of things, the United States has several other things to worry about than just budgets. China has been busy with the development of new advanced weapons, and although some of them are not well known to the outside world, but lately, the U.S.'s attention has been brought to one of China's new weapons. According to a report by the Financial Times, Dmitry Sevilla Pulo and Catherine Hill, China has conducted tests on a hypersonic missile that is capable of carrying nuclear weapons. This missile can travel into space, fly around the Earth, and then descend through the atmosphere towards its intended target, which makes the weapon entirely different from the regular missiles that the world is used to. The test occurred in August 2023, when China launched a Long March 2C rocket into space. On board this rocket was a hypersonic glide vehicle that separated once it attained a specific altitude, maneuvered in a low orbit around Earth, and then re-entered the atmosphere towards a target in the Pacific Ocean. China considered the test success, even though the weapon missed its target by approximately 20 miles. The Financial Times also reported that China's weapon has posed a significant threat to international stability and the national security of the U.S. due to the weapon's feature, which makes it highly challenging to detect and intercept and gives it the ability to maneuver unpredictably and evade existing missile defense systems. Although the U.S. is also working on creating hypersonic weapons, it is not as advanced as China's. The concept for this warhead weapon began during the Cold War in the 1960s, when the Soviet Union came up with a groundbreaking idea to launch nuclear warheads into low Earth orbit and then deorbit at the right time to strike American cities and any location on Earth. This system is known as the Fractional Orbital Bombardment System. Unlike traditional ballistic missiles that follow a predictable trajectory during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, FOBS takes a different orbital path, and this makes its course highly unpredictable and more challenging to defend against. China's weapon uses a more advanced hypersonic glide vehicle in place of a standard re-entry vehicle. The fractional orbital bombardment system has been a source of concern because of its unique features and its ability to avoid missile defense systems and many early warning systems. While this system can carry out attacks similar to traditional intercontinental ballistic missiles, they approach targets from unexpected directions. Based on information gathered by U.S. intelligence, the nuclear warhead mass of the FOBs needs to be half to quarter that of an intercontinental ballistic missile. They also require a bigger ablative system due to the higher entry velocities. This simply means that the FOBs is less accurate and predictable than an ICBM. To reach their targets, FOBs travel an irregular route into orbit and then re-enter Earth's atmosphere. This is different for the with ICBMs, which have more predictable altitudes and re-entry tracks. Also, their unpredictable nature of the FOBs makes it difficult to detect and intercept them, reducing the effectiveness of traditional missile defense strategies. Estimating the single-shot kill probability of FOB strikes is more difficult because their operational range extends beyond that of ICBMs. This weapon is innovative for warfare and it has given China a significant advantage over the United States. 
Although the US has systems that can monitor and counter missiles moving in a ballistic direction, these systems are not equipped to handle a weapon that can orbit the Earth and go through the atmosphere at hypersonic speed. This nuclear space missile has a wide range of thousands of miles from its launch location to strike a target and can navigate in the air and avoid the normal routine that missiles take. It can also launch an attack from the south, where the US has a weak defense system and coverage. This unique feature makes it almost impossible to stop this hypersonic missile. A professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, an expert on Chinese nuclear weapons strategy, and a member of the board of directors of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, Taylor Fravel, mentioned that he was not aware of the test. He also stated that a hypersonic glide vehicle armed with a nuclear warhead may enable China to negate U.S. missile defense systems meant to neutralize incoming ballistic missiles. Since hypersonic glide vehicles have the capability to fly at lower trajectories and can maneuver in flight, making them hard to trace and destroy, Taylor added that the weapon would have destabilizing effect if China fully developed and deployed such a weapon. The United States has also developed systems to track and counter missiles that fly in a ballistic trajectory, rising and falling in a fixed position. However, these systems are not prepared to counter a weapon that can orbit the Earth and fly through the air at hypersonic speed. This simply means that China's new weapon is a stealthy and unpredictable threat that could catch the U.S. off guard. As a result of the growing concerns, the United States is currently developing countermeasures to this hypersonic weapon, although they are not yet prepared. They may face many challenges, such as tracking and identifying China's weapon, keeping up with its rapid speed and flexibility, dealing with multiple weapons at the same time, and coordinating with other sensors and systems. Frank Kendall, the U.S. Air Force Secretary, expressed concern a few months ago about China's significant advancements in this area, hinting at the possibility of global space-based strikes. General Glenn Van Herc, head of the North American Aerospace Defense Command, also warned about China's advanced hypersonic capabilities, providing significant challenges to threat warning and attack assessment. One potential scenario is launching these weapons from underground silos being built in the Chinese desert. These silos could hide ballistic missiles equipped with hypersonic weapons, launching them without warning. This would force the Pentagon to create a new space-based system capable of tracking and countering these weapons, providing early detection of an incoming attack. But this is just the beginning of the United States' worries. In addition to this terrifying nuclear space missile, China also has in its possession the most extensive fleet of conventional drones. The pterodactyl was created by the Chengdu Aircraft Design Institute, a part of the Aviation Industry Corporation of China, and it is quite similar to the Predator Reaper drones from the United States. This drone can be equipped with different sensors like an infrared turret and synthetic aperture radar. It is also capable of carrying weapons. The total weight it can carry, including sensors and weapons, is 200 kilograms, estimated to be between 60 and 70 ships. They also have 20 nuclear-powered submarines, four of which are ballistic missile submarines that can fire nuclear bombs. The country has been steadily working to catch up, especially in terms of quieting and propulsion. China has also recently revealed a guided missile submarine, one of its most sophisticated vessels, and this update was disclosed in the recent Pentagon report on China's military capabilities. This kind of submarine is capable of underwater guided missile launches. There are two primary types of guided missile submarines, ballistic missile submarines and cruise missile submarines. SSBNs feature nuclear-armed missiles that can reach locations thousands of kilometers away. This development has expanded China's military prowess allowing both land and sea attack capabilities that was previously dominated by the United States and Russia. The Pentagon's report, issued on October 20, provides the first apparent confirmation that the submarines observed in Chinese shipyards over the past 18 months are the type O-93B guided missile submarines. Earlier in May 2022, Reuters had already exposed satellite images from the Huludao shipyard in northeast China, 
revealing a new or upgraded class of submarines. These submarines were speculated to have vertical tubes for launching cruise missiles. The report in images has proven China's advancements in naval capabilities, especially when it comes to nuclear-powered submarines. The Pentagon report states that there is a high probability that in the nearest future, the Chinese Navy will be able to launch precise long-range attacks on land targets from both submarines and surface ships using land attack cruise missiles. These missiles enhance China's ability to project power. These conventionally armed missile submarines known as SSGNs were originally created by the Soviet Union during the Cold War to target U.S. aircraft carriers. The U.S. Navy later developed its own version by modifying ballistic missile boats to carry a significant number of land attack Tomahawk cruise missiles. Unlike ballistic weapons, cruise missiles are precise, long-range weapons that fly at low altitudes or skim the surface of the sea. The report mentions that three new conventionally armed missile submarines could be ready by next year, part of a broader expansion of China's submarine fleet, which may include 65 vessels by 2025. The Chinese Defense Ministry didn't answer Reuters' questions. This confirmation comes amid a growing submarine arms race, with China developing new nuclear-armed boats as part of its evolving deterrent force. Tracking China's submarines is a key reason for increased deployments and planning by the U.S. Navy and other Indo-Pacific militaries. Colin Ko, a security scholar, sees the SSGNs as a crucial capability for China. Equipped with cruise missiles, they could conduct land and anti-ship attacks at a distance, complicating strategic decisions for China's rivals. Ko suggests that China might have learned from Russia's use of SSGNs to threaten U.S. aircraft carriers, providing a real advantage. Research at the U.S. Naval War College in May suggested China was close to making its nuclear-powered submarines quieter and harder to track. However, it's uncertain if these advancements apply to the newly launched SSGNs. Some analysts believe that the weapon would be deployed with caution until it gets improved, but the submarine force remains a priority for Xi Jinping. Military analysts have also spotted WZ-8 in Chinese Air Force test bases through satellite images. The public got a glimpse of this supersonic hypersonic reconnaissance drone on October 1, 2019, and it was later revealed to the public eye at the Zhuhai Air Show in 2021. The WZ-8 is a remotely operated high-altitude reconnaissance drone that is capable of supersonic and hypersonic speeds. While it looks somewhat like the DFZF hypersonic glide vehicle on the DF-17 missile and the American Lockheed D-21 drone, it differs in size, propulsion, and speed. The drone takes off from a Xi'an H-6M bomber, which is referred to as the mothership, and launches at the right angle. It then activates its rocket motors to reach its operational speed and altitude. Designed for general reconnaissance, pre-attack target assessment, and intelligence gathering, the drone can reportedly achieve hypersonic speed at an altitude of 50,000 meters near space level. The United States intelligence spotted the drone flying over Taiwan or the Yellow Sea at Mach 3 speed at an altitude of 100,000 feet. Possessing a drone that can fly at an extremely high altitudes and speeds meets intelligence needs in combat scenarios where satellite support is impractical like repeated flyovers above specific areas of interest. According to Chi Li Pin from Taiwan's National Chungshan Institute of Science and Technology, the drone is not mainly targeted at Taiwan, but rather at U.S. military bases in the Pacific, serving as an anti-access area denial weapon. Dean Chung from the Potomac Institute for Policy Studies adds that the drone is designed for surveillance posing concerns not just for the United States or South Korea, but also for countries like Japan, India, and all of Southeast Asia. In 2023, some leaked U.S. government documents revealed a report by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and the National Air and Space Intelligence Center. The report stated that China most likely has its first supersonic UAV unit using the WZ-8 drone at Liuan Air Base, located outside Luan in Dushan County. 
This airbase falls under the Eastern Theater Command, responsible for operations against Taiwan and in the East China Sea. The document mentioned that the drone, equipped with sensors like electro-optical imaging and synthetic aperture radar, could collect intelligence on Taiwan and the western side of South Korea. The drone was said to be deployed at Anqing Air Base in 2021. As of 2023, the United States intelligence reports indicate that the drone and its H-6 mothership are operated by the Eastern Theater Command Air Force from Liuan Air Base in Anhui Province. The H-6M bombers associated with this setup are reported to belong to the 10th Bomber Division. Another formidable weapon in China's possession is the Dongfeng-17. This fighter jet is also known as East Wind-17, is a Chinese medium-range ballistic missile. It uses solid fuel and can be transported on roads. Its main purpose is to carry the DFZF hypersonic glide vehicle. The fighter jet was introduced during China's National Day military parade on October 1, 2019, is China's first operational hypersonic weapon system. It is among the world's earliest to be fully operational. When it comes to design, the DF-17 uses the rocket booster from the already active DF-16B short-range ballistic missile, requiring little changes to the missile itself. The only change is the use of a hypersonic glide vehicle instead of a typical re-entry warhead found in regular ballistic missiles. The fighter jet, along with the DFZF, is expected to target American aircraft carriers within its effective range, especially as China's existing anti-ship ballistic missiles use conventional re-entry vehicles, which are faster but less maneuverable. Over time, the DF-17 and DFZF may be used for both land attack and anti-ship purposes. The DFZF HGV operates differently from normal ballistic missiles. Instead of following a regular arc when fired, it alters its trajectory and accelerates to reach Mach 5. Because the DFZF glides at a lower altitude with a changed trajectory, it becomes much more challenging and complex to intercept using anti-ballistic missile shielding compared to a regular re-entry vehicle. The gliding feature also makes the DFZF more maneuverable, extending its range and making it harder to intercept with ABM shielding. Despite using a booster from the DF-16 short-range ballistic missile, the DF-17 is considered a medium-range ballistic missile. Additionally, the DF-17 has the flexibility to carry a more standard re-entry vehicle if needed. DF-17 prototypes were being tested from 2014, with at least nine test flights occurring between January 2014 and November 2017. On November 1, 2017, a significant test flight from the Juquan Satellite Launch Center in Inner Mongolia took place. The missile's payload traveled about 1,400 kilometers, and the hypersonic glide vehicle flew at a lower altitude of around 60 kilometers after completing the ballistic and re-entry phases of the DF-17. This test happened after the first plenum of the Communist Party of China's 19th Party Congress in October. The missile was officially showcased during the National Day Parade on October 1, 2019. This list would not be complete without mentioning the Chengdu J-20. This fighter jet is also known as the Mighty Dragon, and it is a stealth fighter developed by China's Chengdu Aerospace Corporation for the People's Liberation Army Air Force. It is designed for air superiority and precision strike missions. The J-20 has three variants. The initial production model J-20A, the thrust vectoring J-20B, and the twin-seat J-20S capable of teaming. Originating from the JXX program in the 1990s, the aircraft had its maiden flight on January 11, 2011, and was officially revealed in 2016. It entered service in March 2017, with the first combat unit formed in February 2018, making China the second country and the first in Asia to have an operational stealth aircraft. This fighter jet is renowned for a reason, and its capabilities have placed China at the forefront of technological advancements. With the capabilities of the few weapons that were mentioned, it is obvious that China is gradually becoming a force to be reckoned with. Since the 19th and 20th centuries, 
the United States has always been at the forefront of technological advancement, closely followed by China and Russia. The country is famous for its second-to-none weapons of war, the huge investments dedicated to developing new weaponry, and always being one step ahead of other countries. But since the post-Cold War era, the U.S. has relaxed and significantly reduced the development of new nuclear weapons, while China and Russia have not relented in the development of advanced weapons. Russia's new advanced missile, a hypersonic air-launched ballistic missile that's known as the Kinzhal, entered service in December 2017 and is renowned for its speed of up to Mach 10. The U.S. defense authorities have determined that existing radar systems are inadequate for detecting and monitoring hypersonic weapons. This revelation comes in the wake of American President Joe Biden's confirmation in March 2022 that Russia employed hypersonic missiles during the conflict in Ukraine, emphasizing their formidable nature and the challenges of countering them. The missile's overall design is derived from the older ground-launched 9K720 Iskander missile, but has been adapted for air launching with a modified guidance section for the Kinzhal. Its exceptional speed enhances target penetration compared to lighter, slower cruise missiles. The Kinzhal is specifically engineered to target NATO warships, posing threats to strategic missile systems in European Russia, as well as to eliminate NATO missile defense systems, ballistic missile defense ships, and land objects near Russian borders. While Russian media emphasize the hypersonic feature, portraying it as a new and advanced design, the Kinzhal utilizes standard ballistic missile technology at increased speeds. The missile's range is stated as 2,000 kilometers when carried by the MiG-31K and 3,000 kilometers when carried by the 222 m 3 the fabrication cost for one Cage 47 Kinzhal hypersonic missile is approximately $10 million. The Kinzhal became part of the arsenal of six new Russian strategic weapons unveiled by President Vladimir Putin in March 2018. Deployed on various platforms, including the MiG 31K, 2160M, 222M3M, and reportedly the Su 34 the Kinzhal has demonstrated its capabilities in operational settings. By December 2018, aircraft armed with Kinzhal missiles had conducted numerous sorties over the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Throughout 2019 and 21, the Kinzhal continued to undergo testing and deployment with notable instances of launches in the Arctic and Syria. Also, reports in early 2022 suggested a deployment of MiG-31 interceptors armed with Kinzhal missiles from Soltsy Air Base to Chernyakovsk Naval Air Base in Russia's Kaliningrad Exclave. The Russian Aerospace Force launched Kinzhal missiles in February 2022. In response to heightened tensions, Vladimir Putin ordered the Russian Aerospace Forces to conduct permanent patrols over the Black Sea region with MiG-31K aircraft armed with Kinzhal missiles in October 2023, claiming enhanced mid-flight retargeting capabilities. During the Russo-Ukrainian War, the Russian military asserted the use of Kinzhal missiles to target Ukrainian facilities. President Biden also acknowledged the significance of these missiles, emphasizing their formidable nature against a defense system. Subsequent reports indicated further use of Kinzhal missiles in April and May 2023, with Ukrainian claims of intercepting several missiles. On January 26, 2023, the Ukrainian Air Force reported that it intercepted multiple Kinzhal missiles and drones, despite casualties resulting from the attacks. Notably, on March 9, Ukrainian cities experienced a substantial barrage of 84 missiles, including six Kinzhals, the most extensive use of these missiles to date. On May 4, 2023, a claimed interception of a Kinzhal missile using a MIM-104 Patriot missile defense system in Kyiv marked a significant achievement. The incident prompted discussions regarding the theoretical capability of the Patriot system against air-launched hypersonic missiles. As of June 13, Ukrainian Patriot operators asserted that Kinzhal missiles traveled at approximately 1,240 meters per second, 
challenging Russia's claimed maximum speed. The ongoing conflict underscores the dynamic nature of hypersonic weapons and the complexities associated with their interception. On the other hand, China has also created a weapon with a hypersonic missile that is larger and five times faster than the Kinzhal. This country's weapon is known as the Fractional Orbital Bombardment System. China's FOBS is a nuclear-capable missile that maneuvers into low Earth orbit and strategically deorbits to strike a target globally, similar to an intercontinental ballistic missile. Notably, it boasts extended range and significantly higher velocities. The testing of this weapon in 2021 took U.S. intelligence by surprise. This type of weapon has the potential to render existing advanced missile defense systems useless once deployed. A FOBS, upon launch, ascends to low Earth orbit, orbiting the planet until its intended target becomes visible. Upon identification, the hypersonic missile descends, reaching its peak speed of Mach 27. Conceptually, one can envision the FOBS as akin to a space shuttle carrying a nuclear warhead, diverging from the traditional astronaut-carrying capsule. Covering the entire Earth with its operational range, the FOBS can approach the United States from any direction, presenting a formidable challenge as it arrives at least 10 minutes faster than an intercontinental ballistic missile. What heightens the threat is the FOBS's remarkable agility and intelligence. Capable of evading defense systems while en route to its target, the hypersonic missile becomes even more elusive, complicating tracking and interception efforts. The combination of high-speed agility and intelligence creates an unpredictable scenario, narrowing the window for the U.S. to react from the moment the missile is detected to its potential impact on U.S. territory. This rapid and evasive nature underscores the urgency for effective defense strategies against such advanced weapons. The United States has once again sought to maintain its dominance over near-peer competition, focusing its efforts on the development of a more advanced next-generation defense system. At present, the U.S. has initiated at least three programs dedicated to bringing such advanced aircraft into reality. Project Mayhem, which was set up by the Air Force Research Laboratory, is a devoted effort aimed at creating a combined turbofan scramjet propulsion system. This advanced technology is designed to propel larger payloads over long distances compared to existing propulsion systems. In December 2022, the Air Force granted a substantial $5 million grant to a Virginia-based laboratory for the ongoing development of Project Mayhem. This program holds particular significance as it intends to power critical strike operations, intelligence surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. The proposed propulsion system would enable future aircraft to take off conventionally, travel at hypersonic speeds exceeding Mach 5, and then land like any other aircraft. The innovation lies in the combination of two distinct engines, scramjets and turbofan engines. Scramjets, derived from supersonic ramjets, have been in testing for decades, and Project Mayhem aims to leverage their capabilities alongside turbofan engines for a comprehensive solution. With advancements in scramjet development, demonstrated notably by NASA's X-43A, Project Mayhem foresees turbofan-powered takeoff, accelerating to speeds beyond Mach 2. Once at this velocity, the scramjet takes over, propelling the aircraft beyond Mach 5 and potentially reaching speeds surpassing Mach 10. Full development and testing of Project Mayhem are anticipated to conclude by October 2028. Another hypersonic missile being developed is the Dark Horse from Hermes, an Atlanta-based aviation firm. It is an innovative hypersonic, uncrewed, remotely piloted aircraft. While specific details about Dark Horse remain confidential, certain assertions can be made based on the available information. Dark Horse is distinct from Project Mayhem in its approach, opting for a ramjet rather than a scramjet in its combined cycle engine, known as Chimera, with an estimated cost of $18 million. Ramjets and scramjets share similarities, yet the way they operate is quite different. While scramjets absorb and ignite supersonic air in their chambers, ramjets decelerate supersonic air before ignition, 
using slower, easier to ignite air. The Chimera engine, leveraging the Pratt and Whitney F100 engine as the turbo fan component, is anticipated to power Dark Horse to hypersonic speeds below Mach 6. In December 2022, successful demonstrations of the engine's transition from turbofan to ramjet power in a wind tunnel were conducted, with plans for operational testing on Dark Horse by 2025. The United States is not only developing hypersonic missiles, it is also focusing on next-generation hypersonic jets. An example is the SR-72, often referred to as the Son of Blackbird, which is undergoing development by Lockheed Martin, the world's largest defense contractor. Diverging from its predecessor, the SR-71 is envisioned to possess a diverse array of weaponry, including guns, missiles, and laser-directed energy weapons. Designed for reconnaissance and surveillance, the SR-72 will be equipped with highly sensitive intelligent gathering sensors and state-of-the-art cameras capable of capturing images spanning nearly 100 miles. The aircraft is projected to achieve a top speed of Mach 6, doubling the speed of the SR-71. This remarkable velocity is made possible through a combined cycle turbofan scramjet engine, developed collaboratively by Lockheed Martin and Aerojet Rocketdyne. Lockheed Martin's extensive experience, backed by NASA's $1 billion investment, positions the SR-72 at the forefront of hypersonic aircraft development. The unit cost of the SR-72 is estimated to be $1 billion. The U.S. military has also invested heavily in smart satellites that will go into space and track their rival hypersonic weapons. The United States Space Defense Agency shared that a satellite costs $1.3 billion to make, and they will be making 28 small satellites that will go into space in three years. These little satellites have a special job. They're supposed to give the first warnings and track missiles as part of the future national defense space architecture. This national defense space architecture is made of two parts, the transport layer and the tracking layer. The transport layer is like a transmitter that will make sure military information can be sent quickly and reliably all around the world to different military devices. It's going to have a bunch of satellites, maybe between 300 and 500, circling around in low Earth orbit. When it's all done, almost the entire Earth, like 95%, will have at least two satellites in view at all times, and almost the whole planet, about 99%, will see at least one satellite all the time. It's kind of like they're setting up a big network of satellites to keep an eye on things and make sure everyone can talk and share information really fast. This way, they're making sure they're ready for anything and can stay connected no matter what. It's like a giant space team working together to keep things safe and connected for everyone. The next part is the tracking layer and its job is to keep an eye on things. It will give global warnings and track advanced missiles, especially the really fast ones, using special space technology like sensing algorithms and smart processing. The US Space Defense Agency recently decided to spend $1.3 billion on the first set of these tracking satellites. They gave $700 million to L3 Harris Technologies and $617 million to Northrop Grumman's Strategic Space Systems. Each company will make 14 satellites, and there will be a total of 28 prototypes sent into space in a few years. They plan to do this with four separate launches of seven satellites each, starting in April 2025. These satellites will go into different orbits, sort of like different paths, so they can cover the whole world from the north to the south. SDA Director Derek Turner explained that this way, the United States will have a constant watch over everything happening in the sky. It's like they're creating a super watchful eye in the sky to make sure they see any advanced missiles early enough to intercept them effectively and keep everyone safe. The fact that these special abilities are almost ready to be deployed shows how fast the US changed its plan for keeping an eye on missiles from space. Just four years ago, General John Hyten who was in charge of the U.S. Strategic Command back then, was telling everyone how important it is to make the Pentagon's space sensors better to handle new dangers. And guess what? Congress agreed big time. In the year 22, 
They gave the Space Defense Agency an extra $550 million to hurry up and put in place a really important part called the tracking layer. General Hyten also pointed out this need for a change, and the Congress shared and agreed on his perspective on this as well. They even gave extra money to the SDA in 2022 to speed up making the tracking layer, which is like a special space system to keep an eye on missiles. This quick change and support from Congress show how serious they are about making sure the U.S. is ready and protected in space. It's a fast and important decision to upgrade their space defense strategy and keep everyone safe from possible dangers. Right now, all the departments are working together on the National Defense Space System Plan. They're changing how they do things to be ready for new dangers. Instead of having only a few big satellites in space, they're making a group of hundreds of smaller ones. This way, it's not easy for others to block the view of U.S. military satellites in space. Everyone is agreeing to this new approach, making sure the service's abilities are spread out and not just in a few places to make sure that things are better and safer up there. This is a really important step, not just to protect against China's FOBs missiles, but also to stop Russia from causing trouble by messing with U.S. satellites. Reports suggest they've been trying to do this. Space is super important for military stuff, and now there's a rise in technologies that can harm satellites. Pictures from Google Earth show Russia building a fancy laser system at a space station. This laser can make satellites blind in space, causing some serious problems. So, by taking this important step, it's like the US is getting ready to handle China's fast missiles and stop Russia from messing with their satellites. It's all about staying safe in space and making sure their important space tools work well. The building work is happening at Russia's Krona Space Facility under the Ministry of Defense. This place is known for having the impressive Rattan 600 radio telescope, which has been really successful. This gives us an idea that the anti-satellite weapon they're making there is probably of high quality. Information about this weapon was gotten from a detailed investigation that looked into lots of public satellite images, papers from Russian contractors, and financial documents from Russia. It's like they're putting together puzzle pieces from pictures, papers, and money information to figure out what kind of weapon Russia is making to harm satellites in space. This investigation is like shining a light on something hidden so we can better understand what's going on at the Krona Space Facility. It's all about checking out the details and connecting the dots to see what's happening with this anti-satellite weapon they're building. The investigation uncovered a project called Kalina, described in financial documents obtained by the Space Review. This project involves creating a laser system for electro-optical warfare, designed to permanently blind enemy satellites. The laser pulses from Kalina are so bright that they can damage optical sensors. Unlike temporary blinding lasers called Dazzlers, Kalina is meant to cause lasting harm. It includes a special tracking system with adaptive optics to handle disturbances in the atmosphere. The laser itself has a transmit-receive system, which measures the reflected laser light from its target. This feature helps Kalina aim directly at the optical systems on its target satellites, essentially destroying the crucial spots that, when damaged, render a satellite blind. In simpler terms, Russia is working on a laser weapon called Kalina, aiming to permanently blind enemy satellites by using a super bright laser, unlike temporary blinding lasers. Kalina comes with a special tracking system and a smart laser to hit the most important parts of a satellite, making sure it stays blind. Concerning the potential disruption of American satellites, China is actively discussing its strategies. In a 2022 paper from the Chinese journal Modern Defense Technology, researchers at the Beijing Institute of Tracking and Telecommunications Technology proposed using both soft and hard kill methods to disable SpaceX's Starlink satellites and dismantle the entire operating system of the constellation. The paper emphasizes Starlink's value as a crucial military resource, offering stable communication for U.S. military units worldwide and the potential for high-quality images and live videos for American forces. This indicates China's interest in countering U.S. satellite capabilities for military advantage, 
These hypersonic programs aimed at defense have highlighted the United States' commitment to technological advancements and military superiority, responding to the growing hypersonic threat posed by near-peer competitors, particularly China. The development of these advanced weapons is a critical step in maintaining U.S. dominance and ensuring strategic capabilities in the face of evolving global challenges. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, click on the link appearing on your screen to watch another of our interesting videos. See you there!